Battle for Dream Island, an online animated web series where various objects battled out in a variety of contests for a prize. The show started back in 2010 by two twin brothers and has garnered a large fan base and history along with it. I started watching the show back in late January of this year, and I was hooked. So much so that I decided to make an iceberg video out of it. If you don't know what an iceberg is in this context, it's basically media where it has different entries separated by layers, from the top layer being the most known to the bottom layer being obscure or unknown. There is a lot on this iceberg, of which I created myself, with some help from other icebergs I saw while finding entries. So without further ado, I present to you... Jack and Jellyfy. Jack and Jellyfy is a YouTube channel that launched on February 8th, 2008. At first, the channel mainly comprised on marble races and original animations. On January 1st, 2010, the first episode of Battle for Dream Island was uploaded, and the rest is history. 13 years later, the channel is actively uploading new episodes, currently on their fifth season, The Power of Two. The Huang Brothers. The Huang Brothers are the duo that created BFDI, Carrie and Michael Huang. Both brothers were born on March 18th, 1997, with Carrie being older by about two minutes. Carrie is a writer, voice actor, producer, and animator for the show, while Michael is an animator, voice actor, writer, producer, composer, and editor. They also both voice act many of the characters. Carrie currently voices these characters. Carrie also owns six other channels besides Jack and Jellyfy. Michael currently voices these characters. Michael owns two channels other than Jack and Jellyfy. New Friendly. New Friendly is a royalty-free song created by Kevin McLeod, released on May 20th, 2009. This song was the very first song used in Battle for Dream Island, and is sometimes still used in the background of future BFDI episodes. The song has also been used in many other object shows that have been created over the past decade. This was basically everyone's first song to use when creating an object show back then. This very song even played at the start of this video. I will admit, listening to it now is very nostalgic, especially if you're a veteran in the OSC. Or YouTube in general. The BFDI Mouth. You would probably think this is a weird entry to put on the iceberg, right? Well, there's a lot more to know about this specific asset. The mouth was created by Michael Huang back in 2010 and has gained a reputation, good or bad depending on how you see it, for being so commonly used in any form of media that has nothing to do with Battle for Dream Island. It got so big to the point where the official j, &J channel made a video poking fun at the amount of times the mouth was used, mainly in other YouTubers' thumbnails, videos, in real life, games, and other things you can possibly think of. It's just so funny to me that something made over a decade ago became so widely used that those who are using or seeing the mouth for the first time most likely have no idea where it even comes from. Seasons. There are currently five seasons of BFDI, not including spin-offs. Those being Battle for Dream Island, Battle for Dream Island Again, IDFB, BFB, and The Power of Two. Both BFDI and BFB are the only two seasons to have completely finished. BFDI was cancelled after 5e, and IDFB has only one episode and is presumably under hiatus, as it was never officially stated that IDFB was cancelled. I'll talk more about that later on this level. Satomi Satomi Hinatsu is a Japanese-American voice actress and former producer, animator, and audio engineer in the Jack and Jellyfy crew for BFB and Teapot. Satomi was a big fan of BFDI since Season 2, and joined the crew in July of 2017. She helped with the Patreon, the Character Guidebook, the Fiery Plushie, Designing Stapy and Lie, and also voice acts of many characters as well, listed here. She was also the showrunner for Teapots 1 and 2. Sadly, on July 2nd, 2022, Satomi was laid off from the crew due to creative differences and efficiency problems. 
stating she's the reason why Teapot kept getting delayed and was taking longer than usual to come out. She has stated she would like to continue voice acting characters if she can. Hopefully she continues voice acting. She is a pretty talented VA for the show. The OSC The OSC, or Object Show Community, is a rather big community on the internet. It first started with Battle for Dream Island and has grown ever since. Those in the OSC make a ton of media to show up how creative they can really be, such as making fan art of the characters, drawing their own object OCs, music, animations, meme edits, YTPs, YouTube channels, or even create their own object show. There was a time period where the community was pretty stagnant, mainly around the time Jack and Jellyfy barely posted anything between 2014 and 2016. Once BFB started, the community with it exploded back up and has garnered so many new fans like never before. It is most likely going to keep increasing as Teapot and other shows begin releasing their own content. Recommended Characters Recommended characters are fan characters that are, well, recommended by viewers and fans of the series. They mainly appear during different scenes of an episode and sometimes act as background characters and even have lines in rare cases. In case you didn't know, characters such as Bami, David, Nico, Ruby, and many others were all recommended characters at first. David was the very first recommended character to join the show back in BFDI 18, beating out Bami. Many more would join the show in BFDIA, such as Book, Puffball, Gelton, and Fries. In BFB, RCs were mainly handled via Patreon. However, once BFB ended, so did recommending, and it was never fully stated as to why this became the case. RCs will still appear in Teapot, but possibly after Teapot 6 or some other future episode, they will never come back again. TLC and LOL The TLC, or Tiny Loser Chamber, is a place where limited contestants go in BFDI. It makes its first appearance in BFDI 5 after Woody is eliminated. In later seasons such as BFDIA, the TLC is used to contain non-participants, meaning those who didn't make the cut to compete. It makes one final appearance in IDFB and never shows up again in BFB as it was replaced by 4's exit. The LOL, or Locker of Losers, is a container that was mainly used to hold characters and objects throughout BFDI. Kinda like the TLC, but a bit bigger. It first appeared in BFDI 18, where the RCs did not make it when in there. In BFDIA, it is used to contain the TLC and is brought back again in IDFB. In BFB, however, the LOL does not appear again as it was replaced by 4's exit. It is known that the LOL is empty at this point, due to them having the wall teleporter. Alliances Alliances in BFDI are clubs of contestants that cooperate with each other in hopes of getting farther along in a competition. They are typically within the same team as well. This is not to be confused with ARCs. That will be talked about later. Alliances that have existed are Pin and Leafy's Alliance, Free Smart, and a Newbie Alliance. Alliances are also used to sometimes bring the most out of characters in said alliance. Although, I don't think I can say that for BFB's Free Smart. Goiki. Goiki is a fictional continent on Earth where BFDI takes place. It is mainly just a large grassland plain. There are a number of landmarks connected to Goiki, such as Yoyo Land, the Goiki Canal, the world's largest oven, and the Evil Canyon to name a few. I know I'm forgetting the Pillory Ruins, but it was never really implied that this area is in Goiki, just elsewhere on Earth. Goiki by itself is a very interesting but mysterious place. I hope we get to see much more of it during Teapot. 2763 2,763 2,763 2,763 is a running gag and recurring number in BFDI. The first instance of this number appearing is in BFDI 21, where Leafy uses her map to teleport far away to win the jump challenge and ends up with a score of 2,763 miles. It appears several more times throughout the show, and the number itself has even appeared in places other than Jack and Jellyfy, more notably on Carrie KH, Carrie's other main channel. It even came back in Teapot 4. There have been a few near instances as well, but not the exact number itself. He says that the number 2763 refers to the number of offspring in each generation of the Huang family. Carrie and him are two, their father being one of seven, his father being one of six, etc. Algebraelians the Algebraelians are a group of fictional characters of colorful, sentient beings mainly based on math symbols. They first appear in X Finds Out His Value and mainly show up during an animation short, primarily for some kind of special. They consist of integers and variables and do not have a gender. However, they do sometimes refer to each other by he, him pronouns. The most notable Algebraelians are 0, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and X. There are other miscellaneous ones, such as Infinity. And I guess A? I know what you might be asking, where's the 1 in 3? 
Well, other than briefly appearing in X Finds Out His Value, which is deemed non-canon to BFDI, they never showed up at all afterwards. In the 1 million subs short, 5 says that 1 isn't around, but 4 himself states that he has no idea where 1 is, and nobody really brings up 3. Maybe they'll make an appearance soon, who knows. X Finds Out His Value X Finds Out His Value is a Flash animation that was uploaded on December 31st, 2008, an entire year before BFDI came out. This is the video where all of the Algebra aliens make their first debut on. Besides 2. It is also the first time that the Equation Playground is used. Carey animated the video and was made as a project for his pre-algebra class when he was 11 years old, along with Michael. The entire point of the animation was to help kids learn about algebra using anthropomorphic math symbols. The video itself has been referenced many times throughout BFDI, mainly the <laughs> sound that 4 makes being the biggest one. As of April 2023, the video has 9.6 million views. Also, X is equal to 7. Yoyo City Yoyo City is an abandoned city in Goiki, first appearing in BFDIA 5E. The first people to enter Yoyo City was FreeSmart, and sees that the city is abandoned with lots of tall buildings surrounding the area. It is currently unknown as to why the city became abandoned, as seeing that the Yoyo Nidi looks untouched, buildings and technologies looking to be from the modern era, Evil Leafy briefly appearing, and a flashback possibly showing a younger golf ball, it's implied that the city may have been abandoned relatively recently, possibly before the events of BFDI 1A. There are a lot of statistics about Yoyo City as well, given by two videos that were uploaded on Carry KH. Hope we get to see the city itself again soon. BFDIA 5B BFDIA 5B is not an episode, it's a video game. 5B is a flash side-scrolling platform web game released on February 11th, 2013. The game was created by Carrie and Michael Huang, with Carrie being the programmer and Michael making the music. The game involves the events that happened after BFDIA 5A, where FreeSmart and a few other contestants were eaten up by Evil Leafy and he needs to find a way to escape. The game has a total of 52 levels, but we left unfinished. Same thing with the level editor. On March 3rd of the same year, it was announced that 5B would be postponed from receiving updates as BFDIA 5C was currently being worked on. In BFDI's Best Hiatus Ever video, Carrie states that 5B will be completed over the course of a few months. However, no update has ever come out since. Sadly, the game can no longer be played due to Flash being discontinued in 2021. However, there are still ways to play the game today, either via Flashpoint or HTML 5B, which is the version I recorded myself playing. The HTML 5 version includes the original game, as well as the unfinished level editor and the ability to upload your own levels. I would suggest playing that version if you don't want to install Flashpoint. The port was made possible since Carrie released the source code of 5B on GitHub in July of 2022. Character Guidebook the Battle for Gmai on the official character guide was released on August 29th, 2019 in collaboration with Scholastic. The book was written by Carrie, Satomi, and a Scholastic employee. The book is 48 pages long and has lots of fun facts about the show and the characters itself. It also gives tips on how to start your own object show. The book was first listed for around 5 USD, but other places had it listed as 450 or 699 USD. On February 23rd, 2021, the book was seemingly made unavailable, with no notice of what happened or if it will ever return. In January of 2022, the Jack and Jellyfy merch store came out that the book had been reprinted and now has a price of $12.99 USD. The book is most likely outdated since it was made back in 2019, well before BFB finished and even Teapot not being made yet. BFDIA 6 BFDIA 6 is a cancelled episode for the second season, Battle for Dream Island Again. It is stated that the episode canonically happened as stated in IDFE 1, we just never saw it. The episode was originally going to release on September 1st, 2013, but was then delayed and was then ultimately cancelled. There are a few canon reasons told in BFDI as to what happened. In IDFB1, Ruby apparently forgot to remove the lens cap on the camera, which made everything that the objects had done for the past three years never be documented and it all became lost. In BFB29, BFDIA was cancelled because the announcer had spent all of the show's budget and couldn't be produced since he had no more savings left to spend. However, the real reason as to why BFDIA 6 was canned was because Jack and Jellyfy's AdSense account, the account he needs to be paid on YouTube, was banned without reason. Michael would upload a video to Jack and Jellyfy in March of 2016 complaining about the ban and why they've stopped animating for two years. My name is Michael, and my brother Carrie and I have been making animations for YouTube since the fourth grade. Google suspended our AdSense account almost two years ago to this day. On March 6, 2014, the day that our AdSense account got suspended, our main channel had 44 million views, our secondary channel had 
1 million views. Now, today, the day that I'm filming this video, our main channel has 142 million views. Our secondary channel has 16 million views. If you subtract those, find the difference. That's 113 million views that we haven't received any compensation for. The video itself went viral and would attract the attention of a Google employee, which the AdSense account would be reinstated in July of 2016. If VFDIA6 happened and it wasn't cancelled, Fiery would have won the prize and Puffball would be eliminated. Don't call me Needy! Needy is a nickname given to Needle in BFDI. However, she doesn't like to be called that. Love Needies. Needy! Needy's got to join! Don't call me Needy! Needy, Needy, Needy. I'm glad that I'm not too Needy. Don't call me Needy! <gasps> Whenever someone calls her by needy, she slaps them and tells them to not call her that. It was never really stated as to why she hates being called that. She was going to explain why at one point, but was cut off when being thrown to the TLC. There is one instance where Nito did not slap someone for calling her needy, which was fiery in VFDI's back. In fact, she was fine with being called needy in the video. Ready for what? I'm going to die. Nito, he's not going to die. Ooh, can I watch? Also, call me needy. Needy, I like that. Although, if you watched IDFB1, she slapped a golf ball for calling her that. So who knows if only Fiery is allowed to call her that. IDFB2 IDFB2 is a delayed, not cancelled episode of IDFB. The episode was supposed to be released on October 1st, 2016, but was delayed due to Carrie entering college at the time and was pushed back to December 1st, 2016. It was delayed once again and was then put on an indefinite hiatus. To make up for the delay, Michael promised to release two shorts for both times the episode was delayed. The first one, being Paper Towel, was released on October 2nd. The second short, however, never came to be, and we'll get into that later. On BFDI's Best Hiatus Ever video, it was explained that IDFB would be put on hiatus so that they can work on older projects. At the BFDI and II meetup in 2019, Carrie does make a slight remark about explaining what happened to the announcer, stating it would be in IDFB 2, with it coming out in about a decade or so. There is a chance that IDFB2 may actually happen, but only time will tell when they decide to go back to it. Revenge! The full line being, I want revenge! is a sort of catchphrase or personality that Ice Cube has throughout BFDI. The first time this line was used is in BFDI3, where she says it's about Leafy for killing her with a bowling ball in BFDI2. While she doesn't say the line as much, her tendency to want revenge is always mentioned, such as, BFDI 13, due to Leafy giving her the wrong color ball, BFDI 17 for Pencil not pairing up with her, BFE 15 with her happy thought having Leafy, Pencil, Book, and Match all on fire, Teapot 1 having a slight nod to Pencil, and Teapot 4, where she fully says the line after 10 years, although with it being reused. The character guidebook also states that she wants revenge on people who wrong her, and that she will get it. The Split The Split is referencing to what happened in BFB 16, where 40 contestants moved to 2 show in Teapot and 14 others staying with 4. The split was met with some controversy, with people complaining that the split came out of nowhere and that 40 contestants just randomly went up and left. In a video called The Secret Behind BFB Split, Carrie explained that the split happened because the standards of their animations were starting to get too high for their liking, and missed the kind of magic that old BFDI episodes had. We wanted to return to the spirit of the very first season of our show, BFDI. There's this magic when I look at old BFDI episodes. When I see the things that Carrie wrote in 2010, we would release an episode monthly. There were super low standards. We kind of like joked around, made silly episodes, and there were low stakes. But as the episodes went on, we noticed that the standards for BFB were also rising, just like all previous other seasons had. Yeah, especially in 2018 and 2019, the quality of BFB just went through the roof. The intent of BFB was to release an episode every few days while keeping animation expectations low and just have fun with it. It was also first called Sloppy BFDI. As BFB was progressing, the expectations started to increase and needed to change. Carrie continues on by saying that the show would have taken too long with 64 characters and probably wouldn't have finished until he was in his 40s. The split was made so that BFB can go back to what BFDI had, a fun and carefree animation style with lighthearted videos, while Teapot can keep that animation expectation to have more serious writing. A big motivation for this was I realized at the pace that BFB was going that the season wasn't going to announce a winner until I was in my 40s. So, long story short, this split was to give more people what they want. Yeah. 
You will give me Dream Island and release the FDIA 6. All right, Barry, that's out of line. That's out of line. The BRB. The BRB, or Big Rotating Building, is an area where eliminated contestants go during post-split BFB, as the exit was too full for any more to fit inside. It was first mentioned in BFB 18. While it wasn't shown, you can hear faint machine sounds and contestants screaming in the background. It will be revealed in BFB 22 as a celebration for how close the votes were between Flower and Taco. It was many designed to just endlessly spin at high speeds and the eliminated contestants would spin around in locked cages. One fact about the BRB is that Carrie stated that the model of the BRB is based off of the Yoyo Nidi, which is pretty cool. Shorts Shorts, while being referred to as BFDI shorts on the playlist, are mainly short-form videos that derive away from the main BFDI series, such as not taking place during any season or any place during the timeline. Most of these are labeled as non-canon for that reason, except for these two, and just feature the cast doing whatever they want. These include You're a Loser But, Aw Seriously, Pumpkin 2.0, Claustrophobic Nightmare, Tuesday, and Fish and Chips. There are other shorts involved in the playlist, but these I find to be more or less true shorts, as they don't involve any announcement or special of some kind, just its own unique thing. Also, the playlist itself is a bit outdated as it hasn't been updated since June 15th of 2021. This isn't really hurting anyone, but I think it's time to update it. Plushies The BFDI plushies are a line of merchandise that can be purchased on the Jack and Jellyfy merch store for a varied amount of prices. There are currently 12 plushies as of this video. They are Fiery, Leafy, Fiery Jr., Pen, Woody, Loser, I like to watch you sleep, 4, X, Rocky, Coiny, and Marker, with two coming out soon. As of right now, all plushies are available to purchase, except for Fiery and Leafy, both of which have been out of stock since December of 2022, and with the two plushie not really being available until around July. Carrie has joked about possibly considering an announcer to be a plushie, but he has said that he would probably be more fit to just being a box. Patricia Everly says, where's the announcer plushie? Um, I don't know, maybe we'll consider. I feel like the announcer is better suited as like a physical, like rectangular box. Profily. Profily, otherwise known as Profile Picture, is a character who appears mainly in Battle for BFB. They started off as a recommended character and competed in BFB. However, there are some things to know about this blue circle. They started to quote, compete in BFB 26. They were eliminated in the same episode. They allegedly say that they have competed since BFDI, with the earliest being BFDI 4 in a flashback, although nobody knows who they even are. The announcer apparently does know who Profiley is. They do show up in Teapot, such as Teapot 2 where Teardrop joins, and in the new Cake at Stake song. Contestant Companies There are a number of characters in the BFDI world that have their own companies, these being Yellowface for owning Yellowface's warehouse, Gelatin for owning Gelatin's steakhouse, Flower for owning O for Petal's sake, Blocky being the main showrunner for Blocky's Funnies doing International, and Woody by taking over Blocky's place and changing it to Woody's Fear Destroyer International. I guess you'd count Match as well for the Matchstick Factory, but the times that showed up was in non-canon shorts, so who knows. BFPTM10 BFPTM 10, or Battle for Permission to Meet 10, is a short that was uploaded on June 14th, 2021, along with the Thanks for 1 Million Subscribers video. This was a mini competition between 5, 6, 7, 9, and X, with the prize being having the Permission to Meet 10 and $99 trillion. The mini contest has many references as well, such as the Bounce Beam from BFDI 1A, the Volcano from BFDI 22, the Basket Lows from BFDI 14, the Liar Ball from BFB 7, and the Baking Challenge from BFDI 4. In the end, 8 won the competition as they had brought over 10 while the others were fighting. 10 is then seated on the Jack and Jellyfy sub count, so only they have reached 1 million subscribers, or as the video says, 100,000. Thanks for 4 Years Thanks for 4 Years is a mini-series where every 4 years, starting from 2010, a character will come up and thank the viewers for sticking around during that period of time. This is also used to celebrate BFDI's birthday. The first one, being released on January 2nd, 2014, had Penn come up to say thanks to those who stuck around since the beginning. The next one, titled Thanks for 4 Years of Thanks for 4 Years, releasing on January 3rd, 2018, was instead made with Match talking to the viewers. The final one, titled Thanks for 4 Years of Thanks for 4 Years of Thanks for 4 Years, was released on January 3rd, 2022. This first had Penn talk to the viewers until Match joins in a little while later. If they keep this up, the next one is set to come out in January of 2026. Who knows what will happen until then? 
Jay Silly Boy. Jay Silly Boy, who is now known today as Blue Jay, is widely known in the community as being the very first person to vote on BFDI. He was the very first person to vote for Flower, commenting, Flower goes away. He also recommended the character Bami, which was the very first RC at the time, showing up first in BFDI 9. Blue Jay has also received two tribute videos, the first one coming out three days after the first episode, on January 4th, 2010. An updated one was made on August 7th, 2020. He still has an interest in BFDI, I was even a patron for BFB when the season was ongoing. Subscriber Specials As J&J &J first started back in 2008, there is no doubt back then that they loved the idea of reaching subscriber milestones. When one is reached, they tend to release a video celebrating the milestone. The first subscriber milestone video was for reaching 1,000 subscribers, that being a YouTube poop music video of Intensive Care Unit by Renard. The next one was for 2,500 subscribers, being another YTPMV, this time being on something chat by Joxon. 3,000 would be next, then 6,000, then 20,000. There wouldn't be another subscriber special related video until the channel would hit 600,000 subscribers. It wasn't YouTube poop music video related, it was instead an animation short, mainly featuring the Algebraillians. This will continue on for 700, 800, 900,000, and even 1 million. It's always a treat to watch these kinds of videos, and here's a hoping they make a new one for whenever they reach 2 million subscribers, if they decide to do more, that is. English Cream Cakes English Cream Cakes is another known viewer among the BFDI fandom, just like Blue Jay. However, English Cream Cakes is notable for one different reason. He is known for being the first person to ever vote for Pencil, who at the time did not receive any votes. His comment was, I vote Pencil, she never got a vote. It isn't really known if he is still into BFDI, as things that are listed as his favorites do not have BFDI in it. Maybe yes, maybe not, who knows. What happened after BFDI 25? For anyone that remembers, at the end of BFDI 25, we see that Fiery and Leafy are flying off on a hang glider into the sunset. Unless you haven't been paying attention to the series and just left it playing in the background, there are a few events that happened right afterwards. In order, right after BFDI 25, the next event to happen would be explained in BFB 22. It's shown in a flashback that Fiery and Leafy had crash landed on an open plane, in which the other contestants spot them and they go after Leafy for taking Dream Island. Fiery instead just chooses to walk away, which leads into the start of BFDI A1. In BFDI A1, the episode immediately starts off with the chase scene to get Leafy. In the end, however, Leafy escapes by jumping into her map and heading off to Yoyo Land, in which they just give up chasing her and rip up the map. That's basically what happened after BFDI 25. BFDI Mini BFDI Mini, as the name suggests, is a mini-series that was mainly uploaded on the Jack and Jellyfy TikTok account. The contestants are old recommended characters from past BFDI seasons and challenges were requested by fans. BFDI Mini was hosted by 4 and Snowball. BFDI Mini began on September 10th, 2020 and went on until the last episode of the final season on May 28th, 2021. The voting system uses the built-in poll system that TikTok has, and whoever got the most votes would be eliminated. There are four seasons of BFDI Mini. BFDI Mini, BFDI Mini again, BFDI Mini Deluxe, and BFDI Mini... <laughs> the main reason for BFDI Mini even existing was to apparently try and boost viewer interaction on social media posts under Jack and Jellyfy. It is also unlikely that the Flash files of BFDI Mini would ever be released to the public. The show has also been deemed non-canon, so... Sorry. BFDI and II are connected. For those unaware of what II is, it stands for Inanimate Insanity, hosted on Animation Epic, another object show which is deemed the second ever object show to appear on YouTube. There have been multiple videos of the BFDI and II characters all being together in one place, mainly in meetup videos. The first video was uploaded in June of 2018 on the Jack and Jellyfy channel and has a small animation at the start, showing some BFDI and II characters playing a game that spoofs Candyland, with the main purpose of the video to announce a meetup. This is also the case with the 2022 meetup, as both Jack and Jelfie and Animation Epic uploaded their own version of the animation, announcing yet another meetup, with it also happening for 2023. There are also times that BFDI contestants have shown up in II, such as Puffball Speaker Box, Pencil, and The Announcer. Due to these videos and cameos, people like to come to the conclusion that both shows take place in the same world, despite being told multiple times and even with the first meetup animation having Candyland being called Not Canon D Land. All videos related to it are not canon, they are not connected. It's fun to think about, but it sadly isn't true.
Patreon. Patreon is a monthly subscription-based service in which people, such as content creators in this case, use this as a way to gather another source of income other than YouTube. Those who subscribe can get monthly benefits set by the creator, and these can vary. The Patreon launched on November 4th, 2017. There were a number of tiers that you were able to subscribe to, such as Feel Good Vibes, a name tag, Wallpaper, Cave Drawing RC, High Quality RC, which also prevented you from submitting a David, Character Voice Request with a Colorful Tag, special recommended character, a 10 second animated clip, and a come meet us tier. The Patreon, however, was involved with some controversy. RCs were starting to become too expensive as at the beginning they cost $1 during launch and increased to $25 later on. There was a pause around March 2021, which had no prior communication and left people confused if their RC would be taken. At some point, refunds were eventually given out to those who felt that their RC took too long wasn't up to their standards for what they subscribed to, or didn't appear in an episode at all. All tiers were eventually removed, and only the $1 tier still exists today, with no rewards attached to it. The Exit The Exit, known as Eternal Algebra Class with 4, is a pocket dimension that is located within 4 and serves as a place where limited contestants go in BFB. We get to see the Exit in BFB 10, where the limited contestants are all in a classroom doing things related to algebra. There is also something in the Exit, that being the back door. Lai is first to notice the door. As she tries to open it, she stops as 4 teleports back in the classroom. The door is then boarded up, but Lai still wants to know what's behind the door, and does so in Teapot 1 where she finally opens it. After that, we have no idea where the exiters went as they have not appeared since. Apparently, there were going to be speaking appearances in Teapot 2 with these 8 on screen. This does indicate that an exit appearance was planned, but ended up being dropped without any reason given. Yoyo Berries Yoyo Berries are a unique type of berry in BFDI. They are currently only found in Yoyo Land as far as we know, but can be grown outside of Yoyo Land. Yoyo Berries make their first appearance in BFDI 21, also with the side effects of what happens when you eat one. If eaten, the person would turn into metal that cannot be frozen. They are also unable to run or jump high due to the immense weight the metal gives them. They finally come back in Teapot 4 after a decade. Battle of the Fantasy Foods 2016 Battle of the Fantasy Foods 2016 was a contest held by Wikia in 2016, where 64 fictional foods and drinks would compete in a bracket-style format to see who would win and become an actual food to be served at New York Comic Con 2016. Yoyo Cake was nominated for this competition and was put against a lot of other popular IP foods, such as Black Forest Cake from Portal, Gobble Gum from Call of Duty, Moo Moo Milk from Pokemon, Popsicles from Zootopia, and Pit Cola from Gravity Falls. Yoyo Cake made it to the finals against Pit Cola and ended up winning the entire battle. Real life slices of Yoyo Cake were served at NYC Comic Con 2016. Sadly, there is controversy surrounding this. During initial voting, Jack Jelly put out videos on their YouTube channel telling their fans to go vote for Yoyo Cake. This sparked controversy as people believe that them doing this is the only reason that Yoyo Cake had even won, as no other nomination on the list had their creators do this. Honestly, I don't think people should have taken that so seriously. While yes, it does seem a bit disingenuous, it doesn't really affect anyone. Who am I to know though, I wasn't around for that. 10 Words of Wisdom 10 Words of Wisdom is a camp hosted by Carrie back in December of 2015, where a total of 491 contestants would be tested on their ability to write clever, creative responses to prompts in about 10 words or fewer. Before each round, Carrie would announce the prompt and give contestants 3 days to respond, and would eliminate those who don't respond in the given time frame. For elimination, the fifth of contestants in the bottom percentile would be eliminated, and would later go down to one at a time as contestants' numbers became lower. The camp lasted until December 21st, 2022, as 25B was released as the final episode. The winner of 10 Words of Wisdom was Midnight Light, with their prize simply being Wisdom. This camp is also where the term Twower comes from. Anyone that Carrie mentions by this term means that they have competed in his camp and became an Illumini. According to Carrie, there most likely won't be a second season. Fiery's Candy Bar Adventure Fiery's Candy Bar Adventure is a Flash game that was created on January 15th, 2009 by the Huang Twins. This is the first BFDI game to have ever come out, and was released way before BFDI itself. It's mainly a point-and-click game where Fiery finds a candy bar on the ground and wants to eat it. He can't open the candy bar wrapper, however, and instead goes to look for a match to help him open it. On the next screen, you are given three options. The pond, the back of a bank, or the mountains. Only one option works, that being the mountains. After the entire scene plays, the game just crashes, which is because the game was never finished. 
there is a fan-made extension of the game where all the endings are playable, which is the one you are seeing right now. I would suggest playing that if you want to experience what the game possibly could have looked like when it was finished. Also, here's a fun fact for you. You know the grunt sound that Fiery makes when he tries to open the candy bar? Well, some people did some digging around and found out that this sound comes from a free sound website where a guy is... trying to take a dump. I also like how Himshays is just a play on Hershey's. They just switched the her part with him. Very clever, guys. Donut's Diary. Donut's Diary is a diary owned by, well, Donut. However, there are a lot of mysteries on what it holds. We first see the diary in BFB7, as Loser finds it in the jawbreaker he's in after Donut left it in there by mistake. In fact, Donut actually has two diaries, with the second one being shown in BFB16. Loser ends up taking that as well since he wanted more reading material. What? While Loser was reading the diary in the exit, there are four different entries he reads out loud. Those being, there is something horrific about Bami, why do I have a feeling, but also a hole, a cryptic message that Loser does not read out or seems to not understand it, and talking about something being combined with the Factor 4 and discovering what's really inside the speaker box, possibly referencing the announcer. The second diary is torn up in BFB 22 as a prize by 4 for that episode. However, what happened with the first one? Loser doesn't have it with him in BFB 16. Did he leave it in the exit? BFDI 7 Rejoin In BFDI 7, there is a deleted scene that was going to involve two rejoins. The scene had announcer read out that people volunteered to expand the TLC, but made it smaller by mistake, having it only fit four people instead of six. So announcer is going to allow each team to pick one person to bring back. The squashy grapes, mainly Leafy and Snowball, were going to pick Spongy, but after saying, He wouldn't hate it, would he? Would he? Would he? Back and forth, announcer took this as Woody, bringing him back. <coughs> the squishy cherries, mainly Pen and Eraser, would choose Blocky to come back. As with the real episode, no such rejoin took place until BFDI 9, where Blocky would eventually rejoin and Woody would not be coming back. Cyanide. Without turning this into a medical entry, cyanide is a type of powder and capsule medication that first appeared in BFDI 4, just as a cameo. It appears again in BFDI A2 and one final time in BFB1, as it ends up being destroyed by Black Hole. This is most likely a gag Carrie and Michael thought was funny back then, as in episodes past BFB1, the jar never shows up again. Why did Flower say she deserved that treasure anyway? I totally deserve this treasure. Commercials. The commercials shown throughout BFDI are a running gag in the series and mainly feature Yellowface. These commercials mainly act like how TV ads work, they show your product and urge you to buy them. There are a number of things these commercials try to sell to people over the years, such as gumballs, a bubble transformer, a box of paper slips, revolutionary headphones, non-slip shoes, revolutionary earmuffs, fork attractant, and a can of beans. Yellowface hasn't done any ads in Teapot as of episode 4, but who knows, we'll probably get the chance to sell another product soon. Coiny and Nickel together. No, this is not a ship entry, what this is referring to is what happens when you put Coiny and Nickel next to each other. In BFDIA 5A, before the start of the challenge, Pin suggests that Nickel join their team, Wobunch. In BFDIA, you are allowed to change teams whenever you want to. Coiny says that it's a bad idea as something bad will happen if both of them are near each other. Pin disregards this as nonsense and pushes Nickel closer to Coiny. The screen starts to become distorted until it cuts to the next scene. In BFDIA 5E, as Coiny and Nickel are still frozen but Pin isn't, she puts them together to see what the fuss is about. The ground begins to shake until a portal of money appears. Pin takes the huge money bag and Coiny asks where she found it and if she did any weird tricks while they were still frozen. She brushes this off and says that she didn't do anything. What would you do with the money anyway? There's nothing to spend in that universe. Middle Finger In BFDI 1A, as Pin and Leafy are on the balance beam, they have a conversation about who should win. Pin says that if she wins, she'll let Leafy in Dream Island. Leafy complains that this still isn't fair. Pin then says, Only one of us can win. Um, Pin, wrong finger. Whoops, haha. <laughs> this ended up spawning a joke that Pin put up the middle finger, although on accident. On January 11th, 2021, Carrie released a short on Humany, mimicking the same scene, but putting up his ring finger instead. Only one of us can win. 
The video is labeled as a joke and states in the description that the short should not change how you view that scene. It's all just for a goof. Basically, it's canon that Pin flipped Leafy off. Maybe. Woody's Dab Woody's Dab is a simple joke that happened in BFB. Woody dabs in BFB 2. After believing that they were safe from elimination, Nickel tells Woody to Dab it, my boy Anoceros! The dab comes back in BFB 5, where Team Beatball do it. They haven't done that since, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did it around the time that dabbing was considered popular. Nowadays, it's just seen as cringe or a dead meme. Also, there's a t-shirt for the dab, apparently. What? I'm not buying it. Find the Markers Find the Markers is a Roblox Find Them type game, created by AlexLion0511, where the goal is to, well, find all the markers hidden around the game. The game launched on November 4th, 2021 and has amassed over 600 million plays, with at least thousands of people still playing the game daily. The creator of the game has been a fan of BFDI since Season 1, and has even recommended Marker and Fiery Jr., who was also a contestant in Carrie's 10 Words of Wisdom, placing 17th. Carrie himself has actually played the game and livestreamed it. Funny thing to note, even though Alex has recommended Fiery Jr., he actually finds him to be his least favorite character and regrets having him being made. Shown by this video he made when Fiery Spongy. Golf Balls Factory Golf Balls Underground Factory is an underground laboratory and factory used mainly by Golf Ball for experiments or whatever she feels like doing down there. We first see it in BFDIA4 as it is needed for a challenge. It shows up again in BFB14 as Golf Ball is wondering who is trying to break in as Nelly, Balloonie, and Woody are trying to escape the incoming lava. BFB15 has it appear again but only as a type of garbage shoot and makes its most recent appearance in Teapot 3, where her team, Are You Okay, enter the factory to work on the roller coaster for the challenge. There's probably a lot more to her factory that we don't know of yet, but who knows. Sam. Sam is, well, a random name or character that was only mentioned in BFDI 2. Nothing else is known on who this Sam person is, other than a few theories. Sam may be referring to J&J's friend, Sam Lee, who voices Stapy, Pi, and Lollipop. Sam may be represented towards the announcer's name being Sam, referencing Microsoft Sam. It is also possible that the voter may have misspelled it and tried putting same instead, as if someone had voted a character they also wanted to vote for. In the storyboard video, however, the vote for Sam is not mentioned. Seeing as how this vote slash comment is over 13 years old, we may never really know who this Sam person is. For what we know, they probably aren't even a person, just a simple misspelling. Season 6 Season 6 is a current hypothetical season that may take place after the events of BFB, during Teapot, or even after Teapot. This was brought up at the end of BFB 30 chapter complete, with 4, X, Announcer, and Purpleface having talkings about a next season. It didn't start there, however. On Humanity's React to BFB 20 video, Carrie has stated that if a new season were to happen, he would likely go back to the old style that BFDI, BFDIA, and IDFB had. On August 7th, 2020, Carrie said this on the H-Twins Discord server. I do want to start a sixth season of BFDI when the time comes, but the fun of it is that Michael and I don't have to decide what it is or how it would look until we get to that point in time. Essentially, it's like free range. In this video, it was said that if BFB30 reaches six digit votes, season six will happen at some point in the future. Two days after that video, the vote count was 91,424, not reaching the six digit mark. However, Carrie said that Teapot may have a chance to break that number. Keep this in mind, while BFB30 did not reach 6-digit vote counts, BFDIA was only going to happen if a 4-digit vote count happened in BFDI25. That goal wasn't met, but BFDIA was made anyway, so who knows. Pen Island Pen Island is a joke that was told by Pen in BFDI5. During the bridge crossing contest, Eraser doesn't want to do it since there is no way to cross the bridge without using the ropes. 
Penn says to Eraser that he wants to win Dream Island, and if he does, he'll name it Penn Island, all caps, no spaces. If you put that together, you get... Yeah, I'm not saying that. Even for being 13 years old when that video came out, these guys had quite the sense of humor back then. I give them props for that. W-I-J-T-T-E-F-E-T -E -E Woody's incredible journey to the escape from eternal terror is a Frogger-based EXE game around Woody. It was made in July of 2010 as a gift to their friend Andrew Wang, as a mod to his game, The Land of Stuff. Woody's main goal was to escape from a crash site and into an oasis of peace. Woody acts as the main character, while Blocky, Fiery, Pin, and Bubble act as enemies to hurt Woody. This is also the second BFDI game to be made. The game was considered lost media for 7 years, until October 15, 2017, where a link on Twitter made the game public. Even though the download link is now public, it was never intended to have a public release, as the only evidence of the game even existing was a 4 second tweet by J&J &J to celebrate New Year's 2017. I can do sub 30, I know it. Penn's debt. In case you forgot or didn't know, our buddy Penn here is in debt. In BFDI 20, Penn was up to rejoining that episode, and states that whoever votes for him will receive 500 million Vigintillion dollars. In the next episode, he does not rejoin, as he only received 32 votes. After reciting all the usernames that voted for him, he says that he owes them all 500 million Vigintillion, but can't afford to pay them right now. His debt was brought up one final time in BFB1, where Gelatin brings up that Penn is still in debt and doesn't choose him to join Team Ice Cube because of that. Even in Teapot, the man is still in debt. Who knows if he'll pay back those 32 voters? Object Con Object Con is an online live streaming event mainly for the OSC. This event holds a variety of fun doings, such as watching upcoming OS episodes or series, chatting with your favorite OS creators, or just messing around and having fun. The channel, Object Con HQ, was created in 2019 where the live streams would be hosted on. However, for people who don't know, Object Con did not start in 2019. It actually started as far back as 2013. KDJ98 was the first person to begin Object Con back in March of 2013 and had guests along with it, such as Adam Katz and Sam Thornberry, who was creating Object Universe at the time. Katie would host another Object Con in August of the same year, including the same guests as before and more, such as Michael Huang. It would be hosted again by Katie in 2014, dubbed Alpha 2014 and Omega 2014. Object Con would go silent until 2019, where the Object Con HQ YouTube account would launch. This would keep going for 2020, 2021, and 2022. However, news about 2023 has not been revealed yet. It's honestly pretty amazing to see that Object Con has basically existed for 10 years now. GTTTATINT Get to the Top Although There Is No Top is a game on the htwins.net site that was made by Carrie Huang. It was first released to Newgrounds in January of 2009. The main goal of the game is to get your character, Sticky, to get to the highest platform possible. The game itself exists in the BFDI universe, showing up in BFDI 12 on the BFDI DDS and in BFE 20 as an app on the tablet. However, this is not a BFDI-centered game. It has simply just made appearances and has a version with BFDI characters in it. The recording on screen is from the archive.org site if you want to search for it. Total Fiery Island Total Fiery Island, or TFI, is a series of comics that was made before BFDI was even a concept. TFI includes all original BFDI characters, except for Leafy, Needle, Pen, and Pin, giving it 16 characters. There are 18 issues in total, with 1 through 9 being shown around December of 2012, but 10 through 18 were considered to be lost until Carrie found them in a shoebox. Comic 1 was made on September 30th, 2008, roughly 14 months before BFDI became a thing, with Comic 18 being made around October. Pencil would win Total Fiery Island the prize being $100,000. A sequel called Total Fiery Switch would be made, however only one issue was ever made, and that wasn't finished. A third series called Total Fiery Points would then be made, with about 12 of them being finished and included the missing contestants from earlier. Such comics, such as 1, 5, and 6, had contests that were used in BFDI 1, such as the balance beam, boats, and the concept of teams. A, B, C, D, E, F, G a Battle Concerning Delightfully Exciting Fine Gems is a video created by Carrie KH, being a contest featuring Ruby and her 35 sisters. The contest itself has 7 rounds, the first 6 rounds having them being eliminated for various things, 
such as those who are non-gemstones, those who are RCs or are competing in BFDIA, those with ite at the end of the name for being boring, not having a dazzling color, too long of a name, and not being a birthstone. The final round has the final seven contestants face an Algodoo, a physics simulator program to see who can survive the longest. Amethyst wins A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but is killed shortly after. This would never be referenced again until a Twitter video was uploaded by J&J, &J, where it shows Ruby inviting her sisters to watch a BFB 22 with her. She then remembers that some of them were burned alive in the Algodoo course. RIP. David Land. David Land is, well, just a large sea of many Davids. David Land first shows up in BFDIA 5E, where Team No Name are riding Puffball over the Davids, because Puffball says it's a shortcut to Yoyo City. The Davids only make sound when provoked, otherwise they stay silent. As David Land returns in Teapot 4, we learn something new about David. The Davids in David Land are the large variant, while the David we know is of the smaller variant. According to the official character guidebook, the Davids in David Land were made using the David Cloner. Fun fact, David Land was made a year earlier before BFDIA 5E just for fun. Other than that, it's a very weird place. BFDI Apisot 2255555 This video is, well, a joke video. Created by Michael and was uploaded to J&J &J on January 1st, 2012. The video was made to trick people into thinking it was the actual 25th episode, since that was going to be the finale at the time. It is also a real-life video, which features Lai, Stapy, and Foley for the first time, but as literal objects. Loser was apparently there as well, with him being the cameraman according to a tweet. There was also a slipper called Hello Kevin, a play on of Hello Kitty. Apparently in 2017, Michael posted a video on Twitter with him still having those slippers. Lai would make a reference to the video in BFB5. She would flip her face to the other side, showing the same light switch that was used in the video. The same goes for Woody in BFB14. I think we should have another video with something similar to this. Maybe with those who are in the exit? BFDI.tv BFDI.tv is a simple URL. If you type this into your browser right now, it will take you to the official playlist for BFDI. However, typing this URL in 2016 will send you somewhere else. Before IDFB1 was released, typing BFDI.tv would take you to a countdown, showing how long it would be until IDFB1 comes out. After IDFB1 was released, it changed to show a voting countdown, giving people 10 days to vote on who should be brought back in IDFB2. After voting had ended, the countdown started to go into the negatives, as IDFB2 was delayed, then never released. It going negative was done on purpose according to Kerry. Sometime in 2018, the link along with battleforgmisland.com now redirects you to the playlist. There are also some easter eggs connected with the URL, such as a bubble gif, an ice cube lick animation, a bendy pence gif, and some other stuff. You can actually still view the IDFB countdown timer by going to mail.bfdi.tv. As of this video, it is currently over negative 2,400 days. The Library The library is some location in Goiki that was only mentioned in BFDIA 5A, where book slaps match in saying that they passed by a library, and that it's a rule to slap someone when they go by one. Match does slap book back in 5E, where they pass by a matchstick factory. In short, it's just two places in Goiki where Book and Match have to slap each other whenever they pass by one's buildings that they are normally from. Secret Message in BFDI At the start of BFDI 25, Eraser talks to Penn on how it would be cool coincidence if you take the words in place of the episode number in each episode and line those words up. You would get some kind of message. Penn refuses to believe that. However, such message does exist if you actually do it. Linking all words from each episode, you would get yeah. what is it? No, I are with the police of the episode number of this episode. No coincidence. There is no secret message in the other seasons, except for maybe BFDIA. If you do the same thing here for episodes one through six, not including five B through five E, you would get. Again, because this may be implying to the viewer to not try and find the secret message this time, but since BFDIA was cancelled, we may never know. IDFB UFOs During the intro for IDFB, if you look at the water's reflection, there seems to be a number of UFOs seemingly flying off screen away from Yoyo City. This one part of the intro alone has led to theories on what they could have been there for. 
One theory is that the UFOs may have been used by those who used to live in Yoyo City, leaving the area and going somewhere else. The UFOs themselves may just be more announcers, as they are seen driving the UFOs mainly. This also leads to the possibility that Yoyo City was abandoned because of these UFOs, either by leaving as stated before, or something worse. Since IDFB, they were never seen again other than a flashback in BFB 29. So who knows where those specific UFOs went. BFDI winning the Cartoon Crave Awards Cartoon Crave is a website slash social media account where they mainly talk topics about cartoons on the web or on TV. Starting in early 2021, Cartoon Crave began hosting an award show to have different cartoons be nominated for a chance to win an award. BFDI was nominated for an outstanding web series. Carrie uploaded a video onto Humany on August 29th, telling people to vote for BFDI. On September 9th, J&J uploaded a video about the award show, with it mainly being a mildly crude animation, crude as in there isn't much movement, telling people to vote for BFDI in that category. On January 22nd, 2022, Cartoon Crave announced that BFDI won the Outstanding Web Series category, with a whopping 63% of votes, while also placing second in favorite series in general. Character Arcs Character arcs are sub-stories within the series, and they tend to bring out the most of any character within said arc. There are a number of arcs in BFDI, such as the Fiery Leafy arc, the Taco Book arc, the Blocky Woody arc, and Flower's Redemption arc. There are some that probably haven't even started as well, such as Winner and Clock, Pin and Coiny, Book possibly having a Redemption arc, and maybe Winner and Loser? I can't exactly think of anything else that may happen later, but the Winner and Clock one is the most interesting to me. Those are also under speculation, so don't take those seriously. Evil Leafy Maze Game The Evil Leafy Maze Game is a horror-style maze game created by Michael Huang for Halloween in 2013. The game is mainly around you trying to avoid Evil Leafy for as long as possible while in an endless maze. She will teleport around instead of walking, like how she does in BFDI, and is slightly faster than the player, so she'll catch up eventually. The game also has no audio. On February 3rd, 2020, Carrie tweeted this, saying, I was thinking of adding audio to the Evil Leafy Maze game in 2020, actually. Heavy breathing and BM noises, of course, and a 0.1% chance of Evil Leafy screech. He was planning to do this that same year, but that didn't happen. You can play this game on your browser right now by typing bfdi.tv slash maze. You can also play it on your phone or tablet. r slash place r slash place is a subreddit where you're allowed to submit one pixel every few minutes. This is mainly used as a group effort to try and create something to cement into the official canvas when done. BFDI decided to take part of this event in 2022. On the same day r slash place 2022 started, J&J released a short animation explaining what r slash place is and tells people to help them in trying to get a BFDI character into canvas. Carrie streamed the event on Humany, mainly asking people to protect the drawings as much as they can. There was even an entire Discord server for this. r slash place ended on April 5th with a total of 16 characters being present on it. There are even drawings of II characters and Yellow Carry. What an event it is, I will admit. Fiery Election Fiery Election is an old comic strip that was created by Carrie sometime in 2008. It starts with Coiny flying a kite, in which Snowball throws a frisbee at it, cutting its string. Pencil catches the frisbee and throws it back, passing through Fiery and knocks over Flower's hot dog. All five of them get into a fight, in which Golf Ball decides that the world, being Goiki, needs a president and a set of laws. The election is set between Golf Ball, Match, Spongy, and Blocky. These are all the votes each candidate got except Spongy. He got zero. Golf Ball wins the election with four votes, becoming the president of Goiki. Thankfully, this isn't canon. Satomi Symbol The Satomi Symbol is a simple signature made by Satomi herself, which is mainly present off-screen on scenes that she herself animated. Here are a few of them being posted here, mainly in BFB as that is what she mainly animated on. The very first BFDI animation on November 21st, 2011, first BFDI animation ever was posted to YouTube on Carrie KH, with the animation itself being made on February 27th, 2009.
It's mainly just a music type video animation that was apparently not finished. This was deemed to be the first ever animation for BFDI, until almost nine years later where Carrie would find an even older animation over on Humany. While looking through his old hard drive, he found a file called Fiery.fla, with a date older than what was deemed the first animation ever, being February 20th, 2009, one whole week before the previous one. The animation serves as an index of the original 20 BFDI characters, however it only has three characters finished. It was mainly made because Carrie liked how Fred, a very popular YouTuber at the time, official website worked, with the squares getting bigger as their cursor moves closer to it. BFDI really has quite the history before it became BFDI, huh? Lofty Transphobic Line This is the first controversial entry on the iceberg, and it has to do with one specific line that was said in Lofty, BFDI's 11th episode. Around the 205 mark, Penn makes a remark towards golf while that can be seen as transphobic, of which he says, I'd say Rocky, because golf ball sounds like a boy, even though she's a girl, that's just wrong. Even Carrie himself has stated that the line is transphobic and that Penn should apologize for it. Move episode 11 down to an A because Penn said something transphobic in that episode, which is like, no, yeah, Penn needs to apologize for that. I just want to make this clear. This does not mean Carrie or Michael are transphobic. This was obviously just a fun little line they used as kids, since kids back then would say things like this, no matter the gender. Funny thing is, people in the comment section do say that this is in line with the BFB cast, which to be fair, I can see that. Fiery Underwear Fiery Underwear is a popular meme around the BFDI community, as well as with the OSC as a whole. Fiery Underwear first appeared on Cloudy Egg's channel in his Cursed By Me series. The meme got so big at one point that Michael made a song about Fiery Underwear from an MP3 that Cloudy posted in a Discord server. Also, while I was researching this entry, I came across a pretty dark rabbit hole about Cloudy Eggs that I will talk about much, much later. Bozo Flashback Bozo is an unidentified white ball that is seen during a flashback in IDFB1. The flashback is triggered when Golf Ball sees a cracked set of flower pots, where it shows Bozo running behind the same flower pot, being chased by an unknown shadow. The name Bozo comes from the shadow trying to find out where they are. There are a lot of theories as to what this flashback has. Many people think Bozo is a younger version of Golf Ball, just fully white without the dimples, with those likely coming from the Spike Club itself. If this were a younger Golf Ball, she may have lived in Yoyo City before possibly fleeing to Goiki. While nobody knows who the Unknown Shadow is, people believe that it may be Match or Pencil, as they both called her Bozo before and that the model looks fairly similar to either of them as well. I don't really believe the last part since that was never really brought up between them, but who knows. Bozo looks different from Golf Ball, so maybe they don't realize? Bracelety and Tomska In case you don't know who Tomska is, Tomska is a British filmmaker, content creator, vlogger, comedian, and actor, most notably known for creating ASDF movie and for working on Ed's World. On July 7th, 2021, Tomska uploaded a video onto his Tomska and Friends channel that featured a certain BFB character, Bracelety. The following day, Carrie uploaded a video on Humany, saying that people kept sending him that video and asked him to watch it. He then finds out that Bracelety appears and does a rather cursed Bracelety voice line. ASDF movie that was like oh. the challenge I have for I love getting famous. Ugh. How to be dumb. How to be dumb is a book that appeared mainly in season 1. The book mainly just has steps on well, how to be dumb. There is even another book called How to be so very dumb. From what we know, only Flower, Leafy, Bubble, Pencil, and Lollipop have read either book. The book, however, has never reappeared in any other season, unless you want to count the Lo-Fi Beast to Yo-Yo 2 video. Book's Definitions Since Book herself was first labeled as a dictionary and still is, she has definitions of many of the contestants. She has a definition for Barf Bag, Basketball, BFDI, BFDIA, BFB, Bell, Black Hole, Blocky, Bommy, Book, Bottle, Bracelet, Bubble, Clock, Cloudy, David, Dictionary, Dora, Eggy, Eraser, Evil Leafy, Fanny, Fiery, Flower, Fries, Golf Ball, Grassy, and Ice Cube. One thing I want to point out, for Book's entry on Golf Ball, it says, Is a girl, but sounds like a boy. Also has 336 dimples. In short, 
and Ugly Menace. Doesn't this go in line with it possibly being transphobic, like with the Lofty line from earlier? I don't know, although this is probably just a reference to that episode. BFDI 1A Alternate Ending In the current ending, Leafy and Pin win the contest and leads into 1B, with them choosing teams. In the storyboard video, however, there was a different ending that could have taken place instead. In this version, which originally came from Total Fiery Points, instead of Teardrop falling after pushing Rocky off, she pushes him off without falling and sees Leafy and Pin playing Rock Paper Scissors. Teardrop runs over and knocks Leafy off, with Pin not saving Leafy this time. Pin then chases and pushes Teardrop off, winning the contest. People implied that this version would only have one episode overall, with Pin winning Dream Island. This obviously didn't end up happening and was cut due to timing. Honey's Coiny Honey's Coiny is a sort of mascot that belongs to Honey, now called PayPal Honey, a coupon saving company. This has to do with the tweet that the PayPal Honey account posted on June 13th, 2021. Once this post was found out, people began to meme that tweet, posting pictures of BFDI Coiny in the replies. It got so big to where it caught Carrie's attention. Carrie posted a video onto Humany about a week later, noting the tweet and the amount of BFDI Coiny spam replies. He even himself joined in with his own art adaptation. To this day, the account still sometimes tweet their version of Coiny, and yes, people still tweet the BFDI Coiny image. Uh, uh, Coiny, Coiny, don't stop. Uh, it feels so good. Male Naily and Female Cloudy During the production of BFB1, there were two instances where characters had their gender changed. Naily in the storyboard was originally labeled as a him, stated by Loser. Catherine's son, Naily's current voice actor, had Naily's voice be too feminine, so she was changed to be female. According to a tweet made by Satomi in 2017, Cloudy also went under a gender change, with his voice being too masculine to be female, as he is voiced by Michael Huang, so they changed him from female to male. Imagine a world where they didn't change that. I doubt much would have been different though. Ruby's Weird Song In BFB21, Flowers says, Oh my gardener, Ruby, who said I was beautiful and once sang me a really weird song, got eliminated last time despite getting more votes in one episode than the entire first season of BFDI! What is this weird song? Well, the song in question is called Two Trucks by Lemon Demon. How did Ruby sing it? Did Carrie himself sing it? Well, not exactly. See, what most likely happened is that someone took this song, messed with the semitone pitches, and got it to a point where it sounded exactly like Ruby was singing it. This blew up when YouTuber Bumblejuice decided to host a map surrounding the song. This actually caught the attention of Carrie, where he himself actually participated in the map. It was even his most viewed video on Humany for a while. Flower makes reference to that as she was there when Ruby was singing it. So, Ruby singing two trucks is actually canon. Hope Flower enjoyed listening to it. Reverse Race Instead of the swing set contest, a different contest is going to happen for BFB3. Originally, it was going to be a reverse race, with the storyboard being made by Satomi. This contest was that whichever team was the last to start running would lose. Everyone went but Rocky and Naily, as Rocky simply didn't move and Naily was stuck in the ground. Rocky does take a step and Team Ice Cube would lose, which isn't different from the actual BFB3. Satomi says that the storyboard was scrapped by Michael, as when he went to record lines for it, he came back and said that the storyboard lacked jokes and was too short. Unused RCs in BFB2 In the flash files for BFB2, there are a number of RCs that can be seen here that were not added into the actual episode. Those being Cherry Pepsi, Clorox, Flaggy, Handheld, Jaffa Cake, Only Disturbing Effect in Your Nightmare, Plant Barrier, Simon, Smirnoff Bottle, and Windows. These were all not added due to copyright. Good call to not add them. Can't imagine JJ going through a copyright dispute. Teardrop talking in BFDI 25. In BFDI 25, something happens after the Cake at Stake song. After the Cake at Stake combined song, we get a shot of all the eliminated contestants saying, the Cake at Stake! If you look closely at Teardrop, you can see that she herself seems to be saying it as well. However, this is most likely her lip syncing, as she cannot actually talk. The same can be said about Rocky, since he lost the ability to speak beforehand. This is labeled as a goof on the wiki, and it is most likely so. Just to clarify, this does not mean she can talk. She is literally mute. BFDIA1 Alternate Cut For BFDIA1, there's a scene that was altered to the one we have now. In the current video, we just see the normal BFDI gang chasing after Leafy. In the alt cut, Everything is the same, however, Evil Leafy shows up in the background a few times. How's Evil Leafy not in the video you may ask? 
Well, Evil Leafy was removed from the background using a guide layer that when exporting to a dot .swift does not appear. This was changed as it was deemed slightly distracting according to the description. Yeah, it sure is. LOL Escapees During BFDIA 5C, there are two parts where you see characters who should be in the LOL, but are actually just outside. Those being 8-Ball, Grassy, Bell, Cloudy, and Lightning. How did they get out of the LOL? Well, there aren't really any answers to this. I wish I could give more on this, but I really don't have anything. This probably would have been answered if BFDIA continued, but who knows. Unused Yellowface Scene In BFB2, there exists an audio-only scene where Yellowface would have explained how to break open the Jawbreaker. The audio would start with Fry's asking Yellowface what they should all do. Yellowface then gives them a cassette tape to play, in which Marker snatches TV and places it into him. It would then play a video of Yellowface explaining how to open a Jawbreaker in four easy steps. Free Food would all spit into Bell, pour the spit on the Jawbreaker, wait a few seconds, and Stapy would then break it open. The scene would then cut after Blocky would take back TV, to the scene where X points out to Leafy and Nickel that a team member is missing. Is the scene canon? Well, no. On May 12, 2020, it was confirmed that the scene is non-canon as it was audio only. Shame. Woody on BFDIA4 Thumbnail Around 2017, Michael decided to update all of the old BFDI and BFDIA thumbnails to the current ones we have today. However, there is one thing people noticed about a certain video. In the thumbnail for BFDIA4, a tiny Woody is seen, despite him never appearing in BFDIA. What is he doing there? No one really knows. Some people think that it's just an easter egg, or Michael put him there because people complained that Woody never showed up in BFDIA. It did catch people off guard though, I can say that. B-A-G-U-E-T-T-E Battle Among Gelatins Using Expertise to Take Everything, or Baguette, was the first official BFDI camp hosted by Carrie. The camp itself involved various challenges for what it had, such as guessing when a character was made, a staring contest, who said the following lines, and a few others. The camp was announced on September 1st, 2012, with signups being hosted on Carrie KH. The contestants featured many colors of gelatin, like with ABCDEFG. The camp lasted six episodes, ending in December of 2015 and being replaced with 10 words of wisdom. No reading ahead. No reading ahead refers to a rule that was stated multiple times in BFDIA 1. While the racer reads the rules, no reading ahead appears on rule 3. However, as Yellowface is reading the rules, that specific rule isn't there anymore. Instead, when looking at the .fla, not reading ahead appears off screen as rule 4, most likely serving as an easter egg for those looking through the files. Leafy's Niceness Chart Leafy's Niceness Chart is a chart that Leafy apparently has with her at all times. On the chart, there are 77 levels of niceness, with Bubble ranking 74th and Gelatin ranking 56th. Leafy is quite adamant about this chart, placing herself at first place. She's selfish. There are other things on this chart, but I'll get to that later on the iceberg. Dora's Pie Hole Rant In BFV1, a joke went unused regarding Dora. After Lollipop tells Dora to shut her pie hole, she would have originally spouted out a long string of text that would have flied across the screen. This was cut as Michael thought it would dampen the comedic timing. Woody's Corpse In BFDIA 2, as Puffball, Gelatin, and Needle were flying across the Goiki Canal, among the remains of a possible wooden boat, we see a piece of it that looks vaguely similar to Woody, possibly dead in the water. There is no confirmation this is actually Woody, as he never appeared in BFDIA, but due to the way it looks, especially with the chippings, it is theorized that this is Woody's corpse. There is a theory going around as to how he possibly got there. According to Tennis Ball, Woody died from a heart attack in BFDI 25, but as the speaker boxes were leaving in the UFO, they likely took Woody with them. Explained in BFB 28, the announcer had went back to Earth before BFDIA took place, which is led to believe that he simply dropped off Woody in the canal. Woody does come back in IDFB, but we have no idea how, since no one was really aware in BFDIA that he was missing or dead. What do you think happened? Golf Ball Messages In BFB 14, there are two scenes that involve messages regarding golf ball. In this scene, strings of characters fly by really fast, but if you slow down the video, you get the sentence, Golf Ball is a super genius. While Ions is trying to escape the incoming lava, Golf Ball keeps making them take a different route as they do not want to be near her. After doing this 2,763 times according to Robot Flower, we see the screen zoom out showing a message from Ions, reading, Hello dear Golf Ball, it is Ions. We would like to emerge to the surface, but your presence is preventing us from doing so. We believe you are actively trying to position yourself in the 
before switching to the next scene. BFDI 3 deleted scene. This is fan made, but still something I wanted to include. This is a fan made animation by Whale Animation Stuff, where it shows a deleted scene involving Bubble, Match, and Pencil. Bubble goes up to the both of them with her usual Hi guys! However, Match didn't like that and pulls out a rocket launcher. She then fires the rocket at Bubble, exploding her in the process. Care himself actually commented on the video. This would have been funny if it was real though, not to say that it isn't. December 2016 short. The December 2016 short is a cancelled short that would have served as an apology for IDFB2 being delayed. The short was brought up in BFDI's Best Hiatus Ever by Michael, stating it would release on December 1st, 2016. It did not end up releasing that day, as Michael in a now deleted tweet said that it would release during the first half of December. In that tweet, he did reveal a work in progress angle of what appears to be a train station. In May of 2020, Michael tweeted a sketch from 2016 showing flower on a windy, unsupported railway above ground, which was confirmed to be related by Satomi in 2021. The idea of a train would eventually be used as a steam train in BFB23. BFDIA 4 votes were manipulated. After BFDIA 3 was released, Woe Bunch was up for elimination, with Teardrop being up for voting as well. Two days later, on August 17th, a now deleted video was uploaded onto a channel called Derpy Hooves, asking their subscribers to go to Teardrop's video and to dislike it. In BFDIA, the character with the most dislikes would be eliminated, even if they have the most likes. Due to this, Teardrop's dislikes skyrocketed, causing her to be eliminated with 440 dislikes, while also having the most likes herself at 502. Before BFDIA 4 was released, comments from Derpy Hooves, Michael, and even Animation Epic came from this. According to Michael, Animation Epic was behind the Derpy Hoops profile, although Adam states it was his cousin who made the video, not him. BFDIA 4 would eventually be released, with the manipulated votings being used, causing Teardrop to be eliminated, which will go on to become the most unfair elimination in all of BFDI among fans. The Radios The Radios have appeared a number of times throughout Goiki. The radio first shows on BFDI 4, saying that Needle's Cake has caused the Earth to become a triple planet system due to her putting too much yeast in it, having it appear huge in size. Another radio, in the form of Boombox from Brawl of the Objects, appears in BFDIA 1, advertising the Leafy Detector. It appears one final time in BFB 19, where Ruby's radio suddenly turns on, but the voice is too garbled to be understandable. It is unknown how these radios are able to connect to signals, as we don't see any sort of tower in Goiki at all. Other than the few times the satellite has shown up in the desert and a TV station in BFB 29, we don't even know who is behind delivering these messages in the first place. The BRB Breakout BRB Breakout is a fan animation made by Pezzy. The animation features the eliminated contestants who are in the BRB trying to, well, break out. One thing to note about this animation is that it features some of the actual voice actors. If you remember from the Patreon entry, for $50 a month, you can ask a voice actor to have a character you're choosing to say whatever you want. From what I can tell, this was done for Bubble, Blocky, Loser, Taco, Fiery, Spongy, Balloony, and Lollipop. This is honestly a pretty smart movie to stack up the voice line request, to make something like this. The animation itself is also pretty good. Gelatin is claustrophobic. It turns out that our green friend here is claustrophobic. In the Battle for Dream Island official character guidebook, Gelatin's Did you know section says, Gelatin is claustrophobic. He doesn't like tight spaces. This gives him a reason for pushing people off. If you always wondered why Gelatin would just randomly push people off from Puffball and Bami, now you know why. Unreleased songs. Throughout how long BFDI has existed, there are a number of songs in the BFDI OSC, many of them being unreleased or unknown. These tracks are written from episodes they first appear in, while removing any voice lines or other audio to have it sound clean as possible. Over time, while Carrie was live streaming semi-actively on Humany, he would play a random, unreleased track on stream. There is an unknown amount of tracks in BFDI, with the current number possibly being over 150. There is quite the community trying to rip out as many tracks as they can and document them, even if they don't know the name of the song they are trying to rip. A few of them are actually being played in this video. Lai was going to compete in Teapot. In BFB16, there was a scrapped plot regarding Lai. According to Satomi, Lai was originally going to escape the exit with Loser and Spongy. Had this been the case, she would have left the BFB to compete in Teapot. It is unknown as to why this was scrapped, with the likely cause being to continue her story with the back door in the exit. Honestly, if Lai did go to compete in Teapot, I don't think she would have lasted very long, even if she has a lot of missed potential.
VR headset host. The VR headset resembles a virtual reality screen, with its lenses acting as two separate faces and a mouth. Each face can have its own emotion as well. The VR headset first appeared in a tweet in October of 2017. The character was shown while BFB1 was in production, leading people to believe that this VR headset may have been the original host, but was replaced by 4NX. However, Satomi clarified that the VR headset character was never intended to be a host or even a character in BFB, and was just something Michael thought was cool to draw. We will get into more of what the actual host would have been a bit later. I'm hanging, I'm hanging. This is a cut line that would have involved Gady in BFB1. In 1-42.FLA, there is an unused line by Gady where she says, I'm hanging, I'm hanging. It isn't exactly known as to why this line exists. Since this line exists, some people believe that Gady's death may have been in the world's largest oven, as that has metal that she may connect to and she potentially would have died in there instead of the lava river. This may have also been cut as it could have been taken the wrong way if out of context. Ruby's Sugar Stash in the 10 year anniversary video, The Jing Jing Squisher, there is one scene involving Ruby that resulted in some backlash. At around the first 10 seconds of the video, Ruby appears on screen while talking insanely fast, with Tennis Ball coming in saying that, Wow, somebody needs to lay off the sugar. Of which the sugar pile is shown. There were a number of people that took this as a stash of cocaine, as it was located in the eerie location of the house that they were in, and that Ruby was hyperactive, like how someone acted they were high off the actual drug. Carrie does issue an apology on Humany in his BFB6 behind the scenes video, but was later shown that the apology was a joke and that he has nothing to be sorry about. The official character book also states that Ruby really loves sugar. Question mark, question mark, question mark, slash a super fresh minty clean announcement. I'm connecting these two into one entry as they both correlate with each other. Question mark, question mark, question mark is an unlisted video that was uploaded on August 26th, 2011, which shows someone who is on Michael Huang's account talking to Adam Katz about the outcome of BFDI 21. The fake says that Rocky would be eliminated and Teardrop would rejoin, with Adam not really believing it. This then leads into a super fresh minty clean announcement. This video was uploaded on the same day, consisting of multiple BFDI characters saying that Jack and Jellyfy was hacked but has been resolved, and to not believe Mike H. Twins. Good news, everybody! We've been hacked! Somebody logged into Jack and Jellyfy, and probably the same person, also created Mike H. Twins. Jack and Jellyfy has been resolved, but Mike H. Twins is not us. Don't listen to Mike H. Twins. Keep calm and carry on. However, it was later revealed that the channel wasn't hacked and that the video was a prank. This is honestly a weird point in history of J&J &J channel. Two very obscure videos with not much explaining in it, especially the question mark video. Winner and Loser's Past From what we know, Winner and Loser used to be a duo and best friends together, but what happened that led them to them falling out? Here are some theories that may explain what happened. Both of them actually sort of appear in BFDI 7 as a demonstration for what the winning team does with the losing team, with the winner arm taking a loser cube. It is implied here that the exact same cube taken ended up being loser. After the piles were no longer needed, the loser in the winner pile became sentient, and the winner pile possibly bullied loser shown in the BFP4 flashback. The winner we know was the only one who didn't bully loser and took him under their wing. From what Clock said in Teapot 1, both of them ended up becoming famous, possibly by whatever YouTube-ish thing that exists in Goiki or something similar. As time went on, Loser went solo and hit the mainstream, while Winner faded into obscurity. It is also possible that Winner no longer enjoyed being in the spotlight due to Loser potentially gaining a huge ego, as shown that they do not want their name in the team name. There is a lot more to explain here, but I don't want to drag its entry on for too long. I suggest watching Fordle's video about it. Eggy on Beep Before BFB1 was released, there were originally different team members for Team Beep and the Losers. According to Satomi, Eggy was originally going to be on Team Beep, not the Losers. It would have either been Nico or Robotti that would have taken her spot in the Losers instead. Jordan Jordan is a recommended character that appeared in BFB12, however, there is an interaction to point out here. As Fanny is walking by the RSCs to ask Four to bring back Bubble, we see Jordan here. However, Jelton is seen walking towards Jordan, taking him away off screen. Why did Jelton suddenly take Jordan away? Well, do you see what Jordan is? He's a piece of steak! Jelton owns a steakhouse chain, which is why he took him away. No wonder we don't see him ever again afterwards. BFDIA4 I don't want to. This is an animation video that was uploaded by Animation Epic on September 15th, 2012, but was deleted sometime around 2020 or 2021. The video starts off with the elimination, showing that Teardrop got the most dislikes. Shocker. Teardrop actually says a line here, which is just... Aw oh, darn. It then cuts the gelatin next to the challenge wheel, which only has four choices on it. 
Coiny, Pin, and Nito throw markers at Leafy, which he just responds with Ow. This is obviously a joke video, which even says so in the description. In case you don't think they made it, here's a Wayback Machine screenshot of the video. Albertus. What is this random entry you may be asking? Well, you know the font that is used in thumbnails for BFB and even the logo itself? Well, that exact font is called Albertus. BFDIA5 Original Script We all know that BFDIA5 was split into 5 parts and a game, correct? Well, what if I told you that it would have been 2 parts instead, and 5B was just going to be a normal episode? On the BFDI wiki, a user by the name of Blocky Roblox Kuzo had found the original BFDIA5 script on the H-Twins website. According to the script, 5A would remain pretty much the same, with only the ending being different. The contest does not start as the wheel is locked and you need Puffball Speaker Box to unlock it. However, they were stabbed with a knife bike pin. Fries then tries to take the knife out, failing the first time until they finally got it out. Puffball Speaker Box then unlocks the wheel and the video would have ended with just multiple evil leafies filling the screen. 5B would start off with them beginning the contest to get to the summit of Yoyo Mountain. At this point, the events that happened in 5B the game, 5C, 5D, and 5E all happen within one part. What would 5B be then if the game never happened? While FreeSmart, TB, GB, and Rocky still do go inside Evil Leafy's mouth, the way they get out is very different. When Puffball, Fries, and Gelatin go into the Evil Forest, Evil Leafy would have teleported inside of Fries, with Gelatin telling him to vomit her up. Fries first vomits out Golf Ball, then Tennis Ball, then the FreeSmart Supervan, and finally Rocky. However, Fries isn't able to barf out Evil Leafy and just forgets about it. The ending would still be the same as 5E, with Team No Name being up for elimination. It is also shown that they would have stayed in Yoyo City, following the events of the deleted scenes for BFDIA 6. In an iceberg video uploaded by Spartan Dash, Carrie himself commented on the video confirming himself that the script was real, stating that he hasn't seen that in years. Imagine if we did get the two-part episode instead of the five-part. I'm honestly glad they did go with the five-part route, as I really did enjoy that episode. Jareer Top Jareer Top is an object character that Michael made, probably as a joke. She first showed up on a tweet that Michael posted, which is just teardrop with their asset upside down and the face being on the base. The tweet itself also claims that Jareer Top is the first hyphenated character, which isn't true, as 8 had been a contestant for two years when that tweet was made. Also, Jareer Top never became a contestant. Honestly, Jareer Top creeps me out. Swearing Yes, there have been two instances that characters in BFB were going to swear. In BFB1, on the storyboard where Pilla was explaining the arm fluttering, she apparently would have said the word <laughs> instead of fluff. In BFB23, the same is said about Lollipop. The scene where Leafy points out that the railway tastes like something burning, Lollipop would have replied, No <laughs> Sherlock. It should be pretty obvious as to why these were cut and never made into a real episode. If you want to hear BFB characters swear, just listen to Carrie. Sit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Peter Ruwete. <laughs> Tidepool. With the final game on the iceberg, Tidepool is a flash game created by Carrie and Michael that was playable on htwins.net. You take control of a tiny creature and eat things to become bigger, with the game itself having some similarities to the game's Spore. It even features some BFDI characters, or assets, such as Coiny, Leafy, Camera, Flower, Tennis Ball, Spongy, 4, and X. However, since the game was made in Flash, you cannot play the game anymore. You can still use emulators, such as Flashpoint or Ruffle. Balloony Dabbing Apparently, it wasn't going to be Woody who was going to dab. In the storyboard for BFB2, there is an alternate cut where Balloony would have dabbed instead, not Woody. The lines Nichols say, however, are still the same. If Balloony dabbed here instead of Woody, I don't think it would have been as iconic as it is today. BFDI 23 But Rocky Survives When J&J were looking for new audio editors and animators around February of 2020, they released a Google Drive folder which contains a very different start to what the original BFDI 23 is. In the 4 Audio Editors folder, there are 3 images that contain a different version, where Flower would have been eliminated and Rocky would have been safe. Both the Flower and Fiery speaker boxes are also not present, as Announcer didn't die. Another minor difference would be that instead of a rocket ship taking them up to the volcano, it would have been a helicopter. Is it exactly clear if Flower would have been eliminated in the first place since the votes in the actual episode were very close? This was probably made in advance when Flower had a lead ahead of Rocky and the votes may have changed last minute. Anti-mask propaganda. Well, this exists, doesn't it? BFDI Teapot Sorry is an 11-minute fan animation made by Cade Mullane, being uploaded on October 10th, 2021. It has heavy mention of the coronavirus and masking, which everyone besides Fanny not liking the idea of being forced to mask up. At the end, after making a deal with two to not wear masks, 
everyone gets pissed off at Fanny for telling them what to do, and ends up beating her up. Like with 2 in Teapot 1. The video received a massive backlash due to the mention of COVID and showing anti-mask propaganda. A number of community posts have been made talking about the animation, with one of them even stating that Cade had received death threats. Cade would go on to upload a clean video of the animation, with the COVID stuff removed. There were still problems people had with the video though, with the video being chopped up poorly and the description coming off as passive-aggressive. Also, the sorry part in the title does not mean he's sorry about making a video, he's sorry that he hasn't uploaded a video in months. Despite this, there is still some light, as Cade has stated in Teapot Short a quick announcement that he would drop any mention of COVID in his future videos, which has been true with his latest series. Huge props to Cade for actually going the route to not involve Corona or anything political with BFDI. Don't go and send hate to him, there really isn't a point anymore in doing so. You won't be helping with anything. Nito and Ice Cube's BFDIA voice actors Have you ever noticed that in BFDIA, Nito and Ice Cube sound like they are just reusing old lines from BFDI? Well, you may not be wrong about that. As Carrie and Michael were getting older, it was becoming much more difficult to voice either of them, due to the voices being high-pitched. So while they tried to find new VAs, they just reused old lines or mixed lines together when needed. Ice Cube didn't have a VA until BFDIA 5, where someone named Maximum Power 2002 would voice her, or be credited for that episode. This didn't really last as her voice actors changed to Satomi and Kenzie for BFB. Satomi voiced Ice Cube until Teapot 5, where Kenzie now voices her. One thing to point out, on the prize wheel for BFDIA 5, there is a prize that reads, A New Voice Actor for Ice Cube, further implying that Ice Cube did not have a VA. The same can be said about Needle. She would also have reused lines until BFDIA 5, where she have a new VA. We don't know who they are as they aren't credited. Needle would have a different VA for the BFDIA's back short, that being YouTuber Just the Bomb. The VA from BFDIA 5, however, will return to voice Needle for IDFB1, still not credited. Satomi would then voice Needle for BFB1, with it changing to Pokey afterwards. In total, Ice Cube has had four voice actors, and Needle had five. Both seem to be doing fine now, as Needle has had new lines in BFB and Teapot, and Ice Cube has recently received new lines in Teapot 5, after not having any since Teapot 2. Gelatin underscore and underscore BFB underscore torture dot wav. Cock and ball torture from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Weird sense of humor here, huh? What is it you may ask? Well, it's just audio from a YouTube video reading the Wikipedia page for cock and ball torture. Nobody knows why it's there. It just is. Two is in bad terms with the Algebraelians. This is a theory going around that two may not be in good terms with the other Algebraelians. Let's start off with X finds out his value. We see all the numbers hanging out with each other. While everyone is seen being sentient, two isn't. After this, Two does not appear for 12 years until BFB 16, where he comes down and takes 40 contestants from BFB to start Teapot. Looking at Four, he doesn't seem surprised at all that Two is there and tells him to go be over there with the other fans. This shows that Four and Two know each other well before the appearance. Throughout all the number shorts as well, Two doesn't show up at all. In BFB 30, Clock runs to Two thinking he's stronger than Four and asks him to deal with what's going on. Two responds by saying that he has no idea where he gets that from and would rather not be involved. This shows that 2 knows how powerful 4 is and doesn't want to intervene with what's going on. In Teapot 2, 2 says that he hates math and doesn't enjoy it at all. In fact, he doesn't know what to be, and math is not one of them. Ugh, I'm trying to say that I don't know what I really want to be. Besides green, uh, and a number, those are the things I want to be. Hmm, well, you're a 2. Okay, that's one other thing, but that's still just three things. Anything else is just something I was told to be. Something someone else wanted. Like really, why should I do math? I don't like math. I hate math. What's in it for me? What do I get from math? Ugh. This may imply that Two may have either been kicked or completely left the equation playground due to him stating that he hates math. X doesn't seem to hate Two, as he is seen bonding well with Two in BFB17. X may know what's going on but doesn't take it out on 2 as he probably knows the real story, but either doesn't know how to say it or chooses not to. Who really knows what's going on? BFDI 1B Taken Down On January 19th, 2016, JJ posted a tweet showing that BFDI 1B was taken down due to spam. On the same day, they sent an appeal in hopes that YouTube would see that they made a mistake and bring the video back up. However, that didn't work as YouTube believed that their judgment was correct and that their video would not be reinstated. Kerry would go on YouTube and release a video two days later, showing his outrage that YouTube refused to bring back the episode. He also asked for those to try their best and get YouTube to listen in hopes of bringing the video back. 
For now, he decides to re-upload the video and keep it there until the original video comes back. Thankfully, the video would eventually come back on the 22nd, with Carrie uploading another video saying that the video is back up and that the re-upload would be unlisted. I can't imagine how frustrating it can be wondering why your video was taken down and given no real reason for it. World War Yes, there are some hints that World War I and World War II may have happened in BFDI universe. Of course, this is only a theory. On Leafy's niceness chart, there are a few ranks on there that hint about war. For rank 15, it says, war causingly nice. And for rank 14, it says, World War III causingly nice. From the 14th rank alone, World War I and World War II may have actually happened, as this is talking about World War III. There's also one more piece of evidence that people have found, this being about Puffball. In BFDIA1, where everyone is showing what their favorite screen is, Puffball's screen appears to look like Abraham Lincoln, the 16th US president. From these two things alone, war may have actually happened at some point. BFB host was going to be a spider. At the 2019 BFDI XII meetup in Los Angeles, a Q&A session was being held where you can ask the creators of BFDI and II questions regarding anything about the shows. One of the first questions to be asked has to do with the hosts. The girl asked a question on why 4 and X are the hosts of BFB, since other object shows have objects as the host. Why bring those two back from X finds out his value? Most object shows have, you know, another object as their host. Why did you bring X and 4 back? Why those two and why do you animate them in such a strange... Like, where did those ideas come from in your little minds? So when we were trying to find someone to come after the announcer box, we wanted a spider. Remember Wait, that? we did. Yellow yeah, spider. spider. Or like, um, what is it? Wait, Challenge to win a spider. Yeah. Oh, ew, the like four-legged <laughs> Michael answers by saying that originally, the host was going to be a spider, kind of like the yellow spider from Challenge to Win. Michael further states that he wanted to make the host different from the objects so that it isn't seen as people ruling over other people. Well, like, you gotta make the oh, host different from the objects. Like, Otherwise, it's like people ruling over other people. It's like, that's like <laughs> Nobody wants world. that. Carrie then says that 4 and X weren't given the full appreciation they deserved and wants to give them a second chance to prove themselves. So I wanted to give them like a second chance to prove themselves. And clearly 4 has like definitely put himself together, much more respectable. Yeah, <laughs> good host. Yeah, I agree. No BFB split. Yup. At first, the split and teapot were not even considered early on. According to a tweet by Satomi, the concept of teapot was not considered early on, and instead, they would have just killed off and permanently eliminate those who weren't in the final 14. Yes, they were going to kill off 40 contestants. It's a good thing they did consider teapot, because I'm pretty sure killing off 40 characters randomly would not have sat well with the community. Dora's language. Ever wonder what the actual language that Dora speaks is? Well, it's something called... Insulavoric. It isn't perfect Spanish. Well, it used to be called that until they changed it. The language was first brought up in the official character guidebook, stating that it is very hard to master and learn, as Dora is the only one who knows how to speak it. However, Fort is shown to understand it, but can't exactly speak it. The... She makes aren't actual words either. If you slow them down, there are no words being said. Jellison's unused animation. In BFB8, there is an unused animation for Jellison that sparks interest. Instead of the usual animation where Jellison just floats the barf bag, dead stares at her and says hi, it would have played Jellison floating to her, but he would nervously tap his hands while having a nervous face expression. It is unsure why this was removed, but the likely case may be that J&J &J didn't want to suggest that these two had some form of a relationship together, that being a crush or something else. Leaked plushies. There have been four incidents where BFDI plushies were accidentally leaked before being officially announced, those being Pen, Woody, Four, and X. While Carrie was recording videos for Humany, there are some parts of the plushies would show up in the background before any sort of announcement came out. The videos would be privated in hopes that people would ignore or forget. Of course, this is the internet and screenshots exist of the leaks. While I did say 4 and X were leaked, I couldn't exactly find said leaks. The plushies being leaked did spark up hype for what was to come. Jane j wanted Flower to win BFB. This is an ongoing and potentially controversial theory that Jane j wanted Flower to win BFB since post-split. She was the most hated character due to her attitude in BFDI, also counting the fact that she was the first person to ever be eliminated. During post-split, People did start to like Flower, as it seemed her personality did change and was having some kind of redemption arc. However, this quickly changed in BFB23, as she was seen kicking people again for seemingly no reason, ruining her development. The biggest ordeal would occur in BFB29. 
During BFB 29 as the final two, Flower is seen to be constantly being abused by Pearlface by not giving her the same question as Gelatin, trapping her in a glass box with 200 bugs, and getting hate brigaded during the name pronunciation. With the plot of BFB 29 having the chill's budget getting worse and worse, everyone begs Flower to give up her $50,000 to save the show. She ends up doing so, bringing everything back to normal. Due to this episode alone, it's implied that she won the season due to the amount of pity votes she may have received. It was felt that J&J wanted the audience to lean towards voting for Flower because of what she did and what she went through. Honestly, I don't think this is something to take so seriously. While yes, it may feel a bit disingenuous, this shouldn't be used as a reason to hate on the creators. Either way, I am proud of the amount of character development she at least had, even if there are some people out there that say otherwise. Cancelled Yoyo Cake Short this animation short would have served as a celebration for winning the third round of the Battle of the Fantasy Foods 2016. It was announced via a tweet by Michael on August 4th, 2016. Roughly three weeks later, it would be announced that the short would be cancelled in favor of producing IDFB. The only existing picture is this sketch that was included in one of the tweets. Shame that another short from 2016 ended up being canned. Original Rocket Landing In BFB 6, the rocket landing would have played out differently. It would have landed in a funny and wacky way like this but was changed during production. Unrendered Exit In the FLA files for BFB-16, there lies unrendered exit images that included some unnerving 3D models of BFB characters. This is mainly a render of the exit since the exit itself is in 3D, but the characters aren't. There exists models of the Lyreball, Pencil, Bracelety, Stapey, and 8-Ball. This most likely exists as a form of reference to make it easier on where to put the 2D characters on a 3D plane. Still a bit creepy to look at though. Bubble wasn't always a bubble. I'll let this scene play out for you. So when I ordered a Boyable Transformer from Yellowface all those years ago, this must have been where it came from! From this scene alone, it is possible that Bubble may have not have always been a bubble. The Bubble Transformer first appeared in a commercial by Yellowface in BFDI 7. It is said that the Bubble Transformer can give you smooth and soft skin by turning you into a bubble. It may be possible that Bubble was probably a human. Since Bubble first shows up in BFDI 1A, she most likely purchased one well before the events of BFDI, which would imply that Yellowface existed back then as well. Did humans exist in Goiki? Can the same be said for all the other objects? Makes you think. Beta Designs There exists a number of beta designs regarding BFDI characters. Here are a few that interest me the most. Gelatin's beta design had him without arms. Imagine a world if Gelatin was armless. Naily's early asset shows her being sideways, while also being limbless. This was scrappy for her debut in BFDI 17. Book would have been all red instead of lime green and blue. Tree in BFDI was shown to be yellow and limbless. He gains arms and legs in IDFB. In the BFB1 storyboard, Fanny is seen drawn with arms. However, this may have been an error as Fanny does not have any arms in the actual show. Lightning in the BFB1 storyboard has him without arms. It may have been made that Lightning probably would have stayed limbless, like his BFDI asset was. Grassy would have looked different in IDFB. However, Carrie decides to use his BFDI asset, as it looked nicer. I wonder what else exists for beta designs. Lai, Stapey, and Winner have not died once. This is just something I thought would be interesting to talk about. Out of everyone in BFDI, they have all died at least once, except for these three. Since debuting, Lai, Stapey, and Winner have not died once. Without counting Winner, Lai and Stapey have so far survived the longest out of everyone. Just thought this was a fun thing to include on the iceberg. It's also a bit interesting to note that Winner may possibly die in a future Teapot episode, but for now, they're with Lai and Stapey in the Zero Death Club. Quick edit. Winner has actually died in Teapot 5, so they're no longer in the Zero Death Club. Meatball Asset. When the source files of BFE 15 were released, people found something interesting. In 15i-r column.fla, where the RCs are shown on screen, there is one that stands out for everyone else, that being a meatball character. This character was recommended by Megan W, but is shown to be a reused asset from August 11th, 2013, that was recommended by a different user named RJ341. This asset may have been made around the time that BFDIA6 was in production. I wonder what other Lost RCs there are that exist from BFDIA6. Man, this episode really has a lot going for it despite being cancelled, huh? TM. In BFDI's best hiatus ever, Carrie and Michael explained various things that have been going on that ended up causing IDFE to be put on hiatus. In that video, Michael mentions a tool that is only known as TM, which would allow them to complete an episode in one week. 
Leg two is something that we're calling TM for now. It's a pretty big project, but it's a tool that we hope when it's done, will make it possible for the two of us to make an episode in one week. So yeah, that's the roadmap. That's the general plan. That is what's gonna happen in the next few months. We don't know if this tool was ever finished since it was stated that they wanted to start on other things such as 10 Words of Wisdom, Abacaba, and 5B before working on it. As of right now, 10 Words of Wisdom and Abacaba are pretty much done, but 5B was never worked on, so who knows what happened to it. BFB29 as BFB22. In August of 2020, Sam posted on Discord that he had two ideas listed on what BFB22 could be. One would be a whodunit episode, as some prized possession from 4 going missing, presumably stolen by the have-nots. The half-cots would then have one hour to figure out who stole it. If the guilty person is found, half-nots are up for elimination. Otherwise, half-cots are up for elimination. The second would be a budget cuts episode, with 4 telling everyone that the budget has been going down and that they need to raise money. The contest would be that whichever team raises the most amount of money would win. Throughout the episode, the animation would change from the BFB style to BFDI assets, 4 and X going to their 2008 designs, and possibly have the end be in the style of Total Fiery Island, with everything going back to normal when the funds are received. As current events say, BFB22 would get the Who Done It idea, while the budget cuts idea would be used in BFB29. Oh, I love the moonlight. In BFDI A1, where Puffball says, If you take that part and play it in reverse, you instead have Puffball saying, Oh, I love the moonlight. Of course, this may differ from person to person, but I personally hear I love the moonlight. This is most likely a coincidence and I highly doubt this was done on purpose. Although if it was, Maiko is a genius for doing that. It even fits Puffball given her character. Black Tag This isn't exactly an easy thing to explain since the Patreon has all of its tears taken away, but I'll try my best to explain it. From what I can tell, there were about 24 Black Tag recommended characters who did not have their RC show up in an episode in a meaningful way. Instead, they'll be put in as dancing to try and cover it up, despite this being not what people paid $100 a month for. Slingshot, being an RC of your local artist, has stated that they were ghosted by the J&J Patreon account, having their relevant RC not appearing until BFB29, months after Patreon donations have stopped. This incident would be dubbed as the Black Tag Incident, since with relevant characters, they had a black tag. Yeah, this is a hard thing to explain, I can't exactly give my own take on this. Boy in a Band Exposure David Brown, otherwise known as Boy in a Band, is a musician, songwriter, rapper, and YouTuber. Why is he on the iceberg? Well, he voice acted in BFB, specifically Portable Music Player in BFB 23. However, in August 2022, he would be exposed on Reddit that he is a pedophile and an abuser, saying he has hebophilia, is a groomer, and gave the victim mental and physical abuse, as well as saying that he was a drug abuser. It is no doubt that J&J &J noticed this, as before, BFB23 had his name in the title, but it is no longer there. The Reddit post is sadly deleted, but various sources out there do outline what the post had. One thing to know, however, is that these are all allegations, but it is unlikely that he will ever address these as he has gone silent since 2019, with the post going up in 2022. Early BFB30 Draft BFB30 was originally going to be released in March of 2021, but was delayed to April 9th. Why is that? Well, Sam left a post on Discord saying that while they did aim to finish BFB30 in March, it was not possible to do without the episode being horrible. They wanted to produce a higher quality product, and a final result would have looked a lot worse if they rushed for the March deadline. This may imply that an early draft of BFB30 may exist in the vault. Will we ever see it if that's true? Probably not. Jane J 2018 Thanksgiving Tweet On December 1st, 2018, J&J posted a tweet linking to another tweet they had, stating that the post would be deleted in 20 minutes. The post being linked was from November 22nd, the day of Thanksgiving in 2018. This post has a picture of a poorly drawn leafy with a rather large belly, with the caption, Happy Thanksgiving, hope you have enough turkey. However, the image shows text coming from leafy's belly, which indicates that leafy ate someone. I understand that it's supposed to be turkey that she ate, but why is there a speech bubble coming from the belly? Did you think this wouldn't imply anything? What were you thinking when you tweeted this, dude? BFDIA6.FLAS On September 25th, 2016, J&J &J will publish a video saying that BFDI wouldn't be possible to finish. 
However, there were some release dates for other things. A cartoon would release on October 1st, which would be Paper Towels. IDFB2 would release on December 1st, but this of course didn't happen. And also, all source files of BFDI and BFDIA would be released, with one coming out every Sunday. As a long list of files being shown on screen, there are two that stick out. BFDIA 6 recommended characters at FLA and BFDIA cake at stake 6.FLA. When the source files of BFDIA were released in 2018, these two were missing from the folder. On July 14th of the same year, Michael was contacted on Discord to see if he would release those two FLAs. He would respond back on July 20th. It seems like before releasing those source files, Michael and Carrie changed their minds for whatever reason, with Michael showing that he has very little interest on releasing what is left on BFDIA 6. Shame, but oh well. Cloudy Eggs RP. Remember earlier when I said that I found a rabbit hole regarding Cloudy Eggs? Well, this is it. No turning back. We know that Cloudy Eggs is most known for bringing fiery underworld into the world, right? Well, I think this might ruin that character once this entry is done. On October 1st, 2020, a video will be uploaded onto YouTube showing how Cloudy Eggs is a problem and that they would like to spread awareness about it. To start, Cloudy Eggs apparently docks someone's real name while also bullying them. However, this is only the tame part. Around 2019, Cloudy Eggs was engaging in roleplay with minors on Discord. That's already bad on its own, but it wasn't normal RP. It was more like, let's say, Diaper Humiliation RP. I want you to keep in mind that Cloudy was 17 at the time. He would openly talk about his shit to minors, keeping in mind that they are around 11 to 13 years old. He would send them pics of his actual underwear, with it being covered in pee. Cloudy Eggs also believes that he has paraphilic infantilism that involves role-playing like a baby. This goes from drinking from a baby bottle to wearing actual diapers. This implies that Cloudy may have a shit effort. This got so bad to the point where he apparently had a 12-year-old send pics of them in their underwear while Cloudy himself was 17. When I first found out about this, I thought it was a troll because there is no way in hell that someone who was 17 at the time would do stuff like this. Well, it is true because Cloudy himself commented on the video. I am so sorry if this ruined fiery underwear for you, but I don't think you should really forget the character because of what the creator did. I have no idea what Cloudy is doing now, since he's been an actor from YouTube for over a year. I'm just hoping he gets help, or is currently getting help. This is just disgusting. BFB1 marked as made for kids. Does anybody know what COPPA is? The Children's Online Privacy Protection Rule? Remember back when so many YouTubers wouldn't stop talking about it? Well, if your channel or videos are set to be for kids or is hit under COPPA, the main issue are that comments are forced off. Keep this in mind. On September 10th, 2020, BFB1 was struck with the For Kids Only label for no known reason, with Carrie tweeting about it the same day, asking for people to make videos or post about the problem. Remember, with comments being off, you are unable to vote at all. This was brought up in case this spreads to other episodes. Carrie will upload a video onto Human on the 20th, still showing that BFB1 has comments off. So YouTube has deemed that this video is for kids only. And you can see proof of that by the fact that the description has an ad to try YouTube kids. And more importantly, the comments section has been disabled. The next day, comments were return on BFB1, with the label being removed as well. Imagine if it stayed and ended up spreading to the other episodes. I don't think BFB would have finished and Teapot probably wouldn't have been a thing. Blocky ripped out Teardrop's vocal cords. Well, this got dark, didn't it? On August 24th, 2022, a Reddit post by user Strudel138 showed an image from TikTok of Coiny talking to Teardrop, saying that Teardrop's vocal cords were ripped out by Blocky as a prank. Pretty harsh for a prank, isn't it? For a while, I thought this was real until I did actual research. Right away, there are two problems wrong with this image. The text in the speech bubble is not in writing and isn't exactly centered in the bubble. After further investigation, this image is an edited scene from TFI Book 9. The real scene is just Coiny rambling about Fiery, with Teardrop getting annoyed that Coiny won't shut up and roll the dice. Yeah, I suppose it does make sense that this is fake. She's literally mute, so it wouldn't have mattered. R slash OKBuddyBFDI. This is another subreddit on Reddit, which mainly serves as a shitposting sub. Here's my reaction to it. Enjoy, I guess? Ugh. Oh, come on. What? <laughs> what is this saying? <laughs> Uh, did Dick Dick can't come and find 
don't say oh okay let's keep beef no oh, oh my god i can't show that dark humor i, I can't show that either dark oh no oh for fuck i'm sorry to represent her brand huh and of course the body pillow oh Oh, fuck. I like it, Kaji. Do they actually? <laughs> nice edit. When you see it, you will shit bricks. No way, Rocky. <laughs> She's below Zam. Yeah, I'm done. Leafy has a mental disorder. This is a theory that Leafy may have some kind of mental disorder. Possibly Paranoid Personality Disorder, or PPD. Leafy falls within two symptoms of PPD, those being doubting the loyalty of others and being hypersensitive to criticism. Her doubting starts as far back as BFDI 23, with Bubble complaining that Leafy can't seem to make up her mind on if they are friends or not, and was starting to get tired of it. Fiery also excluded Leafy from Dream Island due to a misunderstanding about the Ferris Wheel, of which she buys it in spite and doesn't want to be rejected. After being chased by the gang, she isolates herself in Yoyo Land, which further builds up the mental anguish that she has had no contact to anyone for basically years. This is still carried on into BFB2, where she has a loyalty chart of her team, Team Beep, in which she gets angry if people don't do their job, like with Cloudy as she views it as being betrayed. She is hypersensitive to criticism as when she asks for people there to be her friend, Gady says she needs to think about it since they don't know each other. Leafy took this as an insult and believed Gady hated her. In short, she just wants to forget her awful past and start new memories with friends again. Being alone and outcasted by everyone for so long can really mess a person up. Rule 34 BFDI logo Yeah. To be fair, when I first found this image, I could not stop laughing for a good 20 seconds. I was honestly thinking about just not putting this in the iceberg at all, but I did anyway. <laughs> Battle for BFDI Creepypasta underscore BFB underscore this channel is rather interesting. Battle for BFDI Creepypasta is a channel that seems to just upload still images of BFDI characters, and are themselves in some way, with slowed down BFDI music in the background. The channel was created on November 17th, 2019, with the first video being uploaded on January 29th, 2020. As stated before, each video has a different character, those being Leafy, Fiery, Coiny, Pin, Needle, Loser, Cake, Clock, Eggy, Taco, and Book. This apparently serves as some kind of AU, or alternate universe, where in this universe, 4 lost his powers, therefore, he can't bring anyone back. Death is permanent. People have tried to connect the titles of the video together to form some kind of message. However, it was never fully completed as the channel hasn't uploaded since February of 2020, as they apparently lost access to the account. Probably a good thing. I can only imagine what would happen if it went on. Teardrop Official This is another rabbit hole waiting to be opened. Teardrop Official was a YouTube channel that mainly comprised of them to try and bot Teardrop's votes during BFB. They would get smaller BFDI related YouTubers into helping bot Teardrop and by getting them to use alts on Teardrop. Teardrop Official was also apparently just some kind of weirdo. After Teardrop was eliminated in BFB 29, they deleted their account. One thing to note, there was rumor going around that TDL said that Teardrop was never their favorite and in some cases they were just trying to make Teardrop look bad by botting so she would get eliminated earlier. As you can see, that didn't really work since she ended up being third. Also, don't do this crap. What is wrong with you? Did the BFDIA4 votes inspire you to do this? BFDI26, Flowers Revenge. This is a creepypasta. You know what those are, right? This is a supposed lost episode of BFDI called BFDI26, Flowers Revenge. It starts off with someone finding a weird video on JJ's channel, aptly titled. The video starts off as normal with the intro, but there is weird analog covering the screen. It cuts the flower with a knife talking to the rest of contestants, saying, You guys have been messing with my life for the longest time ever. You guys killed me and you're proud of it. Now it's time for me to kill you. Flower would first stab Bubble, but instead of just popping her like normal, she would begin bleeding instead. Pencil would be next and seemed to be getting There was also a few frames of Flower's empty eyes having what seemed to be human eyes. Match is horrified and screams, OMG Flower, that was like brutal. As these kind of creepypastas go, she didn't stop and kills Match. She then grabs multiple knives, throwing them at the rest of the contestants as a large wave of blood goes around her. Flower then heads for the announcer and kills him. 
The last few seconds is a still image of Flower, covered in blood with bloodshot eyes. Wow, how original. After the video ends, the person would email Carrie and Mike about the video, wondering what the hell was going on. They would receive a letter about two weeks later, explaining that they are sorry and wondering how they even found the video in the first place. Apparently, a friend was over at their house back in 2012 and uploaded the video without them noticing. The video would be deleted the next time they go onto the channel. This is just a creepypasta and should not be taken as fact. To be fair, this is just an average creepypasta. Lost episode? TV analog? Bloodshot eyes? Give me a break. Everyone is dead. This is a theory that I find the most interesting out of the other theories here. Everyone knows that death in BFDI is common. They come back seconds or episodes later via the recovery center or alien recovery. However, there is one demonstration that makes this confusing. In BFDI A5D, while Freesmar is driving underwater in the Gwaki Canal, we see that they drown. A lot. They are constantly brought back with the HPRC. The cycle continues until we get a wide shot of there being multiple dead corpses in the water and being chucked out of the van. This may imply that recovery centers don't exactly recover, or at least not the original character. When someone dies, the recovery center just spits out a clone with the same memories of personalities that the previous one had. In BFE 14, Barfback does say that there could be a fiery recovery center nearby, which implies that multiple fireys exist in the universe. Where do you think Fiery Jr. came from? Use a clone of Fiery that probably suffered the same fate of what happened to Ice Cube in BFE 13, being smaller. In Teapot 4, there was a yellow faced skeleton, which may further back up this theory. Even with the most recent episode of Teapot 5, the bodies from Free Smart all the way back in BFDI A5 D are still there. In short, death in BFDI is actually a thing, and the characters we know and love are just clones of the originals. Probably isn't true, but fun to think about. 50 million views video. On June 30th, 2014, JJ will post a tweet saying that an animation is being worked on for reaching 50 million channel views, involving Flower in some way. On July 19th, they would tweet out again saying that the video was still being worked on. However, nothing else is known after that and was presumably cancelled. On August 4th of the same year, a JavaScript app called 50M would be uploaded onto GitHub by Michael, which would imply he was the one working on the animation. This actually led to rumor that BFDIA 6, which would have been worked on at the time, would be 50 minutes long, since it was 50M. The code is left unfinished and just shows a skybox. This is just a ghost town of an animation. There is nothing on this at all. Barfbag has a walking disability. This is a theory that Barfbag may have some kind of walking disability. Throughout BFB and even in Teapot, she is sometimes seen leaning and sitting down a lot. Back in early BFB, Lollipop would always talk about how Barfbag's brain is damaged or infected from the barf molecules that she has, which is a thing that can happen in real life. In BFB 14, Barfbag is seen having the most amount of trouble walking down into the buried forest, to which she uses her arms as support to go down. Even back in BFDI, BFDIA, and IDFB, she is always seen always sitting down. In Teapot 1, she is seen leaning on Gaty, and in Teapot 2, she is seen using Gaty as support to stand up. There are episodes where Barfbag is walking normally, but that doesn't exactly debunk this theory as it can fluctuate. All in all, this is a pretty good theory. Original BFDI 12 and 20 If you didn't know, BFDI 12 and 20 have two versions. BFDI 12 had an error where Golfball and Rocky were shown on another name, despite Rocky being in a different team, the Swissy Cherries, and Golfball being eliminated. The video was re-uploaded with the errors removed, but this caused the votes to go up as well. BFDI 20 had an error where an entire 30 second portion of the animation was missing and was re-uploaded to fix it. The votes were counted from the original, not the re-upload. The videos with the errors in them are long gone and were never found. Would have been pretty cool to see the errors from both episodes. BFDI 1 through 10 on Prime Video. If you don't know what Prime Video is, it's just another streaming service that's hosted by Amazon. On January 1st, 2017, an unknown user posing as Carrie and Michael would upload BFDI 1A onto Prime Video. They would post a new video every month until BFDI 10, the last episode to be uploaded. If you go to the link now, you're unable to watch the episodes and it is likely that they were taken down for copyright. It isn't exactly known how they were uploaded onto Prime Video, despite the real show being completely free on YouTube. Who did this? BFE 14 was in production since 2012. Yes, there is a chance that BFE 14 may have started back in 2012. Well, the only sort of evidence that lies here is in the description, which says, We did it guys! We're so proud of this episode and we're really, really happy you finally get to see it. Most of this episode has been in the works for almost a year now, and some parts of it are as old as 2012. This implies that BFE 14, or something in it, was in the works since 2012. What those are isn't exactly known, since nothing in the episode looks like something that came from BFDI or BFDIA. 
I know it's common to reuse old things, but it's very interesting to think about. Total Fruit Island. Ah yes, this one. This is perhaps the biggest lost media on the iceberg and in the OSC as a whole. Total Fruit Island is a current lost media object show that was apparently first made sometime in December of 2010, which would make it the second object show to ever exist and not I.I. TFI was first brought up by Carry on Humany, stating that he vaguely remembers a really old object show he used to watch, and can only recall an orange being the host, being a stereotypical Asian. After this video, a mass investigation happened trying to figure out what happened to the show. People found a Twitter account called Pudster12345, with tweets dating back to 2010 about them being subscribed to Total Fruit Island, as well as liking the first and second episode. The link in that tweet just goes to a deleted account. On January 14th, 2022, an archived WordPress was found with it containing the description of TFI's first episode. On August 19th, Kerry released a third video about the subject, showing that he was tweeted on what was supposedly the TFI host, that being an Asian Mandarin. This leads to a rabbit hole of a website called Fruity Cuties. The amount of fruits on there do confirm that some of them are real, such as the ones stated on Pudster's tweets. There is one more thing to mention. On February 8th, 2012, an account called Total Fruit Island would upload a clip onto the internet archive of the supposed lost intro to TFI. Two days later, the same account would post a 15 second silent clip of what would be the first episode. These clips haven't been confirmed if they are real, but nobody has been talking about them. So who knows? This entire show is just a giant rabbit hole. I doubt we'll ever figure out if this show really existed or not, or whoever created it. Well, that was quite the iceberg, wasn't it? You probably learned a lot of things about this web show, and maybe some of them you wish you'd never heard about. This video has been in the works for over three months, and I'm finally glad to bring this out to all of you. Thank you so much for watching, and if you really did enjoy it, feel free to like the video. Thanks again, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye! So when you search Jack and Jellyfy and you see all these copies and these guys tweet stuff, um, you'll know uh, that this isn't real because, okay, I don't know if I should say that.